Pulled down third, fourth, fifth, perfect. Then he gave up a home run in the sixth. He went five and two thirds and gave up four and runs, but he didn't walk anybody. No balls and a strike. You know what's most odd about Steve Dreyer is he's come up and he's pitched pretty well on occasion. Hardly anybody mentions Steve Dreyer as a possibility for rotation next spring, and he's a viable possibility. He is because of uh, he has one thing going for him. He has had a taste now of the major leagues. He knows what it's going to take. One ball and two strikes. I think he is hampered by the same problem a lot of pitchers are. Uh, Norm. He doesn't have that one overpowering pitch. He has to be a pitcher to be successful. And so there's nothing that when you watch him warming up on the sidelines say, ooh, ah. Mm -hmm. But he's had some success in the minors, and he's had some here. Two balls and two strikes. That's a foul ball. In fact, there are a lot of pitchers. The irony of that is that there are a lot of pitchers who, when they were young, had that ooh, ah pitch. And then as they got older, they developed into more like Steve Dreyer and had a lot of years of great success. Yeah, and a lot of them developed the pitchers that people went, yeah, <laughs> Instead of, ooh, ah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Her ball just misses the outside corner, and count goes full to McRae. McRae, the son of the skipper, Hal McRae, has had a nice season. Always has a good season. Well, but this year he's hit well, 284. Ow, back. Ah. That was short. Oh. That was about as close as we've come. I thought we had our last foul ball <laughs> in Arlington Stadium. And first of the year. We haven't had one up here. Actually, first of, it's been a while. It's been several years, as a matter of fact. Of the great memories. <laughs> when I was working with Merle, we got one so hot one night. That was with me. Well, oh, it was I you? was here that night, yeah. Oh, it came screaming <laughs> into the booth. Hit the back wall and actually knocked the paint off the door casing. Well, and it, and and it, it went back out before we right. even knew it was out of here. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> There's George Brett. He's on deck. Couldn't even get the hands up for that. Was a screamer. Three balls and two strikes. One hopper at a strange at second base. Two down. Here's George Brett coming up. Batting third, number five, designated hitter, George Brett. Well, that's true. Both of them are going to be there in 1999. Brett is hitless in this series. He's 0 for 8, so Ranger fans have a good chance of seeing his final hit today. He is due. And there's a souvenir. That's going to be valuable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no balls and a strike. Brett hitting 266, 19 homers, 75 RBIs. Best respected, energetic, terrific, talented. Yeah, that fits him. There's a shot. Well hit. Gonzalez goes over, and he's got room and makes the catch, and that retires the side. As we go out, we'll take a look from the old to the new. The ballpark in Arlington. Rangers coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a special program on Sunday. Arlington Stadium's final game souvenir Think Tyson is the greatest heavy that ever lived? Watch Joe Lewis. Like Sugar Ray Leonard? Wait till you see Sugar Ray Robinson. See them. Own them. The greatest fights of the century. Yours to own. Yours to keep. Walcott and Lewis. Zale and Graziano. Dempsey and Tunney. Carnera and Bear. And many, many more. Rare dynamic fight footage preserved on state-of-the-art videotape. You can be there for the fantastic fights of the century. Call now to own them. Call now for the fantastic fights of the century on modern videotape for only $19.95. Call now. Two volumes of the fantastic fights of the century. Yours for just $19.95. Two state-of-the-art videotapes with the fights you've only heard about. Yours for just $19.95. But you must call now to take advantage of this special television offer. You must call now. Call now to order this two-volume set for only $19.95. These fantastic fights make the perfect gift. For faster delivery, please have your credit card ready. Call 1-800-592-1222. That's 1-800-592-1222. Shoot Wrestling is coming to America only on pay-per-view, only on October 5th. Shoot Wrestling, it's real, not suitable for younger audiences. 
As we go to the bottom of the first inning at Arlington Stadium for the final time, let's take a look at the Rangers batting order. David Hulse in center field, then Doug Strange at second base, Rafael Palmero at first, Juan Gonzalez is the left fielder, then Julio Franco, the designated hitter, Yvonne Rodriguez catching, Rob Ducey in right field, Jeff Houston at third base, and Manuel Lee, the shortstop. Here's the defense for Kansas City. McReynolds, McRae, and Jose in the outfield, with Gaetti, Lean, and Gagne, and Hamlin on the infield. Maine is catching Kevin Apier. What a year Kevin Apier's had. He follows up a 15-8 and eight last season with a 17-8 and eight going into play today. Apier's earned on average 2.6 one for the season. Look at the innings pitched and the few hits. Look at the walks to strikeout ratio. And what does that get you? Unless he gets ripped royally today, it gets you the award for earned run average award winner of the year. He has a comfortable more than third of a run lead on former Ranger Wilson Alvarez of the White Sox, who are the only two pitchers under three in ERA. Kevin Apier, you want a developing pitcher? In 1989, he won one major league game. In 90-12, in 91-13, in 92-15, in 93-17. Lord help the hitters in 94, it sounds like. Well, not only that, you know, he was second in earner on average last year, so he's gone one step up in that category. I, I kind of smiled when you said former Ranger Alvarez. I would call him one-time Ranger because he was one yeah, time. Literally a one-time <laughs> Ranger. That's a... That may be the perfect use of that phrase. Here's David Hulse. David, 293, good year. One homer, 29 runs batted in, 28 stolen bases, and he leads it off here in the bottom of the first. No score after the top of the first inning, and Apier's first pitch is lashed into the crowd, Souvenir City. All the tickets sold today, but as you can imagine, with uh, the weather conditions, uh, heavy rain uh, early this morning, not all of them have been used, or at least yet. We say that because the last couple of games when the first inning has been played, no, all the seats haven't been pulled, but before long, uh, they do fill up. Ball is stroke to center field. McCray slashes over and makes the catch, and he's all wet. <laughs> it's okay. Got five months for the dry out. Watch the... Yeah. <laughs> They get the first out here. and Doug Strange will be the hitter. Doug, 256 with seven homers, 59 runs batted in. Sat out yesterday's game. Kevin Kennedy has with uh, only one exception, and that's due to injury, the regular lineup, the lineup that was the regular at the end of the year, and he made some comment about that, and I think it's very fitting. Kevin Kennedy saying he thinks the fans deserve to see the regulars in the last game of the season. And, you know, that's really feeling for the ticket buyer, isn't it? Sure is, especially when you're going to have maybe 40,000 here. Now, had it been a crowd of six uh, and uh, a general malaise over the ballpark, that's a little different thing. But a lot of people here want to see this Rangers club win and get off on a or finish on a strong note. Because remember, everything that happens in this game goes into the record books. I mean, it's the last game, the last out, the last home run. They want to have positives. Two balls and a strike. It's not just one of those games you kind of Play and forget it and wait till next year. One thing we should also consider about the people not in seats at today's game. Many of those people, you get the feeling, bought tickets speculating it was Ryan's last game. I think all series, I think, to a certain extent had that because uh, had he not been hurt uh, in Seattle, he would have pitched this one and he would have had one other one on his homestand. There's a chopper to the first side, Hamlin. Two down. Big, uh, one of the first of the perhaps four big at bats now for Rafael Palmero. If he wants to hit 300 this year, figure he's got to go about three for four to finish right on it. He's hitting 297 with 37 homers and 105 RBIs. The problem with that is he appears to be pressing and uh, Already to be pressing and then get the situation where you got to get three hits. That's going to be very tough. He's almost just got to relax and see what happens. In fact, it takes three straight hits to get him to 300. Well, if he could get three straight hits, then that's enough for the day. He gets three straight hits. You can take it to the bank that Kennedy will run for him. Mm -hmm. Here's the 1 0 pitch. One ball and one strike. First, we had three home runs. He'd at 40 there. How about three hits, three homers, huh? Gonzalez on top. Griffey one behind. Griffey 
is hadn't hit one yet because Minnesota has all the runs in the Minnesota Seattle game it's four nothing in the fifth so the lead is still one foul ball of course Gonzalez also has to concern himself with the major league home run lead and he and Bond start the day even at 46 and of course a big game for more reasons than just the home run championship at stake San Francisco at Los Angeles a little bit later on one ball and two strikes that's foul back. We'll try to keep you updated on the Atlanta game. And right now, they lead Colorado 4-2 in the bottom of the sixth inning. That's Glavin going for number 21. If they win, San Francisco would have to beat the Dodgers to force a one-game playoff tomorrow night in Candlestick. There's a hard shot, but Hamlin bobbles it, picks it, fires to Apier, and that retires the side. So that retires the Rangers in the first. We'll take a look at the second inning with uh, Hamlin, Gaetti, and Main coming up. No score looking at the ballpark in Arlington. Frequent flyers on most airlines are thousands of miles from a free trip. But on Southwest Airlines, our company club frequent flyer members are only eight short round trips away. Southwest Airlines Company Club, the shortest route to free trips. Southwest Airlines has so many flights, if you miss one, you can always catch the next one. Or the next one. Or the next one. Southwest Airlines. It's just plain smart. Elvira here, mistress of the dark and sometimes surfer babe, because Coors Light is the official beer of Halloween. And the party's at the beach, Malibu Beach, where you can hang ten. Look, Frankie and Annette. And of course, when it's time to chill, just reach for that cooler of Coors Light. Aged, ice cold, never frozen stiff. It's the right beer now for Halloween. Just look for the Silver Bullet Smooth Display and dig up your friends now for a party at the beach. Happy Halloween, dude. Did you know Texaco puts System 3 in every grade of gasoline? System 3 gets high marks in every grade, which is a lot better than I ever did. My dad says Texaco puts System 3 in every grade. I'm in the fourth grade. That's why I always fill up with System 3. <laughs> what do I look like? Don't say it. When it comes to performance in cars both new and old. With System 3, I can get great performance from Beacon Hill to Beverly Hills. Count on every grade of Texaco System 3. Don't try it with any other gasoline. I wouldn't. Who we'll asked you? For more power, better mileage, and cleaner emissions, pour in the power that runs clean. Berryman Carburetor Cleaner Fuel Treatment. This copyright program presented by the authority of Major League Baseball and the Texas Rangers, intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written permission of Major League Baseball, the Texas Rangers, and home sports entertainment is prohibited. Bob Hamlin leads off in the second against Dreyer. 239 average, two homers, five RBIs. And the count now even one ball and one strike. Big Bob Hamlin. He is a guy that they think may be able to win the first base job based on his minor league season this year and the fact that his back is finally healthy. One ball and two strikes. That one catches the corner, and that's the kind of pitcher that Dreyer needs to be if he's going to be successful. And so far through the first four hitters, he has been that kind of pitcher. Well, hitter should know pitcher here. Hamlin spent most of the year at Omaha, and Dreyer spent most of the year at Oklahoma City. This is Gary Gaetti. You know, another thing important here with Ham or with uh, Dreyer, this gives him a couple starts in rotation. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact they both happen to be in this ballpark probably doesn't hurt. There's the first base hit. Gaetti who homered yesterday as the first base hit of the ball game. So, uh, you know, you don't remember the first base hit in the last game. That one doesn't count. <laughs> if it's the only one, we've got a story. <laughs> then we remember it. <laughs> Brent Main will be the hitter. Brent, the catcher today, hitting uh, 259 with two homers and 22 runs batted in. Uh, if you're wondering about Gaetti, no, he, he doesn't do anything at first base, although uh, hit and run is always a possibility. The Royals have to play that way a lot at home. 
This is a ball club that I think the margin of home runs uh, between home and road with them something like 22. They've hit, I believe it's 22 more home runs on the road than at home. The Rangers, for instance, are just about even. Just a slight difference, one or two home runs different. I think it was 70-something to 50-something, somewhere in that neighborhood. Well, the Royals in this series, again, even though it's the last series of the year and everything, the, the Royals series is going exactly like the Royals season. They hardly walk. They've walked four times in the series so far. They don't hit the ball out of the yard, and they don't steal bases. That's, that's, that's something Kansas City's got to address in the offseason. This is the lowest-scoring team in the American League, and they're losing their doubles home run and RBI leader to retirement. And they also, uh, we talked about this before, they have to cut the budget, we yes. would think, and so that doesn't bode well. Two balls and no strikes. There goes the runner at first. The pitch is slugged in the left field. Gonzalez is right there to make the catch, and getting back to first will be Gaetti. Two down on a hit and run. It doesn't pay off. No, as a matter of Greg, we can underscore this again. The Royals this year, now remember, this is the year that TV revenues were up compared to what they'll be next year. And also there was an expansion payment this year because teams came into baseball. The Royals this year figured to lose $16 million. Yeah, somebody's got to go in the offseason. Mm -hmm. There'll be a few. Here may be one of them. Kevin McReynolds, 242 with 11 homers and 42 runs batted in. And that's a strike from Steve Dreyer. The problem becomes, who's going to take McReynolds off this year? No offense to Kevin, but this is an aging player who's been in decline now for three years. Only if there is a fair ball backhanded by Houston, the long throw. Yes, sir. Jeff Houston making the play from third. That takes care of McReynolds and the Royals in the second. No runs, a hit, and one left. We'll go to the bottom of the second. It'll be Gonzalez, Franco, and Rodriguez scoreless in the ballgame. If there's one thing a professional painter can say to a do-it-yourselfer, it's this. Don't do it yourself. Get some help. At Sherwin-Williams. The answer? Good paint, good price, and good advice. Guaranteed. I rely on these guys for almost everything. You know, a professional painting crew wouldn't even start a job until they got all the help they needed. You shouldn't either. The pros, no. As Sherwin Williams. Every season is more of a physical challenge, but after 26 years in the majors, I've learned to take care of myself. Like now, when my muscles are sore, I take Advil. Just a couple of Advil, and I'm ready to go another nine innings. To last as long as I have, you got to stick with what works. Advil, Advanced Medicine for Pain. It's time for the Texas Lottery Winner's Circle. A hats off salute to everyone who plays the game of Texas. These lucky Texans are already winning, so visit your local Texas Lottery retailer. Play the game of Texas, and maybe we'll see you in the winner's circle. Golf can be a game of a lifetime, whether you're four years old or 94 years old, it doesn't matter. Just being out in the open air and the sunshine and green grass, you'll love the game. It is an historic day at Arlington Stadium. The career's wrapping up, and we believe it has been an extraordinary season in 1993. Here's Juan Gonzalez, who has had one of those extraordinary individual seasons, leading off in the second. Juan hitting 312, American League leading 46 homers, 118 RBIs, one under the Ranger record, by the way, for RBIs in a season. And he'll be leading off against Apier. Gonzalez against Apier is four for 22. There's an update on the big score. Colorado still hitting in the seventh. It's 4-3 Atlanta. There's nobody on, and Steve Bedrosian's come in. Juan takes the first pitch inside. Juan, 182 against Apier. He does have a home run. Now, home run's hard to come by against Kevin. He's given up only eight, which is very, very good. And even if you 
tossed in the factor of uh, Kauffman Stadium, you'd figure he'd probably be giving up no more than 12 if he was playing in, a, in another park, and that's still very, very good. Well, to give you an idea of how good it is, the next best of the regular starters in the American League, Apier's given up eight. The next best is Kevin Brown, who's given up 14. This guy is just a terrific pitcher. But you know he's not going to win the Cy Young. No, no, no. Not going to win that. Two balls and a strike. Great year, though. He has been really the difference. You figure he is uh, 9 over 500, and the Royals are just 83 and 78. Gonzalez takes a pitch on the outside corner. And here, you're, you're seeing in this at bat why if you're so good. He hasn't thrown the same pitch twice, nor to the same place twice. Real hard to guess with a pitcher who's got this many uh, places to throw the ball and pitches to use. Two balls and two strikes. Now you'd think this is going to be something low and away. That's what I'm doing if I'm guessing. It wasn't. I would have struck out too. That's one out. Goodbye, Greg. Yep, I'm out. <laughs> 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 he threw him a fastball in. But now, <laughs> see what you said was right. He moved it around, he moved it around, he changed speeds, and then when he got the two strikes, he busted it. Yep. Here's Franco. Now it's possible Julio's playing his final game, not only in this uh, ballpark, but as a Texas Ranger. He's been named to the Ranger all-time team, which, by the way, will be honored following the game. The only Ranger ever to win a batting championship, and it's not that the Rangers don't appreciate his skills or think they have eroded it all. That's foul. It is that they don't feel he can defensively man a position, and they have a man with a contract coming back next year in uh, Canseco, and Julio doesn't have one after this year. Well, Julio is the only man who's ever won a batting championship in the Rangers uniform, a 341 average in 91. He was selected to three consecutive All-Star games, and he's the only Ranger to ever be named the MVP of an All-Star game. And only Al Oliver has a higher lifetime batting average than Franco, who's at the 307, Oliver at 319. And there's a strike called. No balls and two strikes. It is a 71 degrees here at the, the ball yard, and uh, as we say, hazy overcast. You could say a threat of rain in the sense that the sky is overcast, but it really doesn't appear like it's going to. There's no wind to really mean any fronts are moving in. We're just stuck. And there you take a look at the ballpark in Arlington, the home of the Rangers next season. You see that overcast sky. We're going to be having some shots from inside the park a little bit later on. And, of course, we'll be carrying the ceremonies following the game, the digging up of home plate and the transfer of it to the new ballpark. The interesting thing about that, we were told before the game that... Uh, they're not sure how deep the the uh, pylons are, the, the setting for the home plate. It may be as deep as four feet in the ground here. Nobody's sure. Well, <laughs> luckily we to dig it out. Luckily, we got several politicians taking place in the in this post game ceremony, and they're expert at shoveling. <laughs> there got to be some digging here. Two balls and two strikes. Normally, the home plates are attached to a heavy wooden base, and the base is buried. They're just not sure how big the base is because it's been here for so long. There's a shot to right field. Franco with the base hit. He'll take the turn at first base. He's going to go in with an extra base hit. Julio Franco, who's trying to get that average stuck over 290, has a base hit on his first hit back, coming in at 289. And he's in scoring position. Go fish at Long John Silver's, where right now you can go for one of three great special meals, each just $1.99 at Long John Silver's, where America goes for fish. Today's game also brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Catch all the action in Sports Day every day, only in the Dallas Morning News. Rodriguez will be up as Franco with his 31st two-base hit in scoring position here with one out. And what do we say about Franco over and over? And Kevin Kennedy is well aware of this. Franco hits good pitchers. Yep. And Apier is one of the best. And that's why you kind of hate to see him go. Well, Julio's going to the Dominican Republic, and he's going there to play second base. He said he wants to play second base in the big leagues next year, and hardly anybody thinks he can because of his discreet, uh, decreased mobility. His agent, after the season, Chuck Berry, is sending him for a full medical evaluation of his knees because he wants teams out there thinking of going after him to know his knees are fine. 
Well, if you want a hitter, he's a hitter, that's for sure. The other part, you're going to have to prove. There's a little bloop to right field coming on for it is Jose. Can he get there? Will it be fair? Nope. On two counts. Franco planning on scoring on that one. He knew no one was going to be able to catch it. The question is, was it going to fall in fair territory? Well, Franco, speed-wise, actually, he's stolen some bases. As you can see, he's got braces on both knees. they pretty obvious through the uh, trouser leg. But speed-wise, it's picked up as the season has gone on. And what Norm is talking about is mobility, the, the quickness, the, the quickness and the range to play the infield. Not so much that he can't run anymore. He's, he's picked up some of the speed back. Could he play left field? I think, he, I think there are some positions he could play, absolutely. But I don't think the middle infield. No balls and two strikes. And that's why. You know, you always think of first base. You think of even third base because he has infielder's uh, hands. He played infield for so long. Well, Braves get an extra run. It was the 40th of the year for Dave Justice. Well, he's had a nice one, hasn't he? Oh. One ball and two strikes. That, I think he went. Yep. Run. Struck him out. Run, Pudge. <laughs> and first base not occupied. They had to make the toss down. Pudge has had a couple of strikeouts the last couple days where he's been badly fooled and tried to stop, but just hadn't been able to stop that bat. And number three, right fielder, Rob Cousy. So as Rodriguez is the second strikeout in, of the inning and game for Apier, Rob Ducey will have a crack at getting the run in. Rob had a good year since he's, well, he's had a good year altogether. Let's talk about Triple A too. 300 there with 17 homers. Here with the Rangers, he's at 293 with two more homers. Including yesterday. And by the way, at this moment, he stands as having hit the last Ranger home run in this ballpark. Well, since Apier doesn't figure to give up many, whoever's got to rob Ducey in the pool is in pretty good shape. <laughs> right. No balls and a strike. Pitches down a little bit. One and one. Ducey made such great strides with his season in Triple A. Uh, I guess prior to that, well, obviously prior to that, there'd been some question whether or not he would be able to be a major league outfielder. He's got a great arm, covers a lot of ground, but the hitting was the question. Well, he's not going to get the run in here, but he has shown the Rangers that he has a pretty good bat now. That retires the side. Rangers have a double by Franco with one out. Leave him at second. We'll go to the third. There's no score. Discover the defensive training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting new videotape. This is the professional instructional video that gets results. See how this group of youngsters added an amazing six miles per hour to their arm strength while vastly improving their running speed and defensive skills in just a few weeks of work. Baseball World's revolutionary new video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same defensive drills used by Baseball World's back-to-back 1990-91 -back AAU National Championship teams. Lou Pavlovich, Jr., editor of Collegiate Baseball Magazine, calls it a masterpiece, the best defensive drill video ever produced. San Diego Padres Major League Superstar Fred McGriff agrees. I'm so impressed with the instructional videos by Coach Amansky that I've given them my full endorsement. When you watch them, you'll know why. Baseball World's defensive drill video makes a great gift and benefits players of all ages and ability levels and improves coaches' practice organization. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 1-800-423-2121. Call now and we'll ship today. Don't miss a single second of SWC action. Coaches, players, and previews. No matter what the sport, it's all right here on This Week in the Southwest Conference. Wednesdays at 6 and Saturdays at 9.30 on HSE. Nobody covers Texas high school football like High School Extra. Reporters across the state get weekly updates on the premier teams in Texas. Watch High School Extra Wednesdays at 6.30 and Thursdays at 11 on HSE. We left KC and drove all night to see you give it one last flight. We miss you, John and Sandy from Olathe, Kansas, for George Brett. An open letter that all Kansas City Royal fans certainly wish they could be here I'm sure this game is being televised yesterday's game was not televised into Kansas City but this one is so they're getting a chance to see George play for the final time here's Gagne it'll be Gagne leaned and Jose here in the third one ball and no strikes Gagne 
facing uh, Dreyer, who's given up just one hit, the single to Gaetti in the second. Two strikeouts, no walks. Gagne at 279 batting average. Almero at first base. Bobbles picks. He'll make the play by himself. One down. Today's game is being brought to you by Texaco System 3 Gasolines. In every grade, System 3 helps make a difference in your car's performance. This is game 113, hopefully without an error for Palmero. He would need 82 games at the start of next season to match Steve Garvey's all-time baseball record, consecutive errorless games by a first baseman. Strange at second base. Catch it. There we go. Two down. I'll tell you what, and there are an awful lot of Ranger fans, in fact, virtually all Ranger fans, sure hope he does it in this uh, particular Ranger set of uniforms. Well, and Rafi trying to increase his marketability. I don't know if you've noticed over the last few weeks, saying in interviews, I mean, he'd love to play here. People saying, gee, there's not much of a market for first baseman, and Rafi saying, um, I'd, uh, I, I'd switch back to left field. I, I wouldn't be as good. Uh, mm, you saw that sign, uh, too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A little question in the minds of some of the fans. One ball and no strike. And you know the tough thing on the players on this is uh, what one guy does has something to do with what the next guy may be able to do. You know, the Franco, the Palmero, uh, you mm -hmm. know, Canseco is a given, barring a trade. He is a given that he's going to be here next year. He's got two years on a contract. But the other two aren't, and uh, what one does may determine what the other does. That's, that's what's unfortunate. Tell you what, I think there's a lot of thought that the Rangers are going to wait to sign, see if they can sign Palmero before they negotiate with Franco. That may be a major mistake. A bet that good, you probably should tie down if you can get him at a realistic price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only... The only only area that he has slowed down is, is defensively, and some of that was the knees. Some of it, frankly, was, to be honest, maybe before the knees. He wasn't uh, great at covering a lot of ground at second base, but he was certainly average or better, a little better uh, in some cases. Three balls and a strike mm -hmm. to Felix Jose. Struck out the first time. Meanwhile, the Rangers uh, getting another strong start from their starters. This would be three out of four that uh, in this uh, homestand that have had real good beginnings. Tough play from Manuel Lee, but he makes it easy as it slows down on the grass, and that retires the side. We've gone through the top of the third. There is no score. The Rangers coming up with Houston Lee and Hulse. faster than water. Every chance I got, I would go see him, and it was like looking at God. And the memories that I have of a different era will be like your memories of this ball. This is a wonderful ball. I can't wait for opening day. I'm be here opening day. There's a place where we all come together to sell our goods, marry our children, mourn our dead, to reveal our villains and heroes. It's the place we all share. It's the story of all of us. The Dallas Morning News. Pick up the story of all of us. Rangers coming up bottom of the third time for the Major League Notes brought to you by Bally's. Remember, you can receive a two-week mini membership free. For more information, call 1-800-WORKOUT. Here are the Bally's Notes. Ozzie Smith has now stolen at least 20 bases, 16 straight years. The only man to do that for this century besides Ozzie is... Rogers Hornsby could play a little bit. The White Sox have to be just a little worried about the fact that Frank Thomas hasn't been able to go for a week now because of that bruised arm. They now they say he's going to be fine, but you know Thomas would like to have had a couple of swings. Oh, I think so. 
Houston misses the first pitch. No balls and strike. We've been joined in the booth by, yes, the man we mention every single Ranger telecast. Every single telecast we mention the Amazing Emu because that's the name of the trivia book. Who was but the Amazing Emu? In vain, though. <laughs> He's with us. Jim Kern is up in the booth. He first participated in yesterday. Did you get anybody out yesterday? I wasn't watching that closely. Did I get end. anybody out? I almost hit somebody and then got him to fly out. Well, I saw you throw your warm-up to the screen, but that was a trademark. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Hatcher makes it. But I want to ask you a question about George Brett. Do you have any particular memories of at-bats uh, George Brett against you? Basically, the thing you remember about Brett is he was awful tough to get out. You never tried to strike him out. He was like Carew. Instead of throwing nine pitches and having a base hit, you tried to throw one, roll it over, get him to hit a two-hot shot, shortstop, and get him out. That uh, doesn't tell me. What was your success against? Very poor, needless to say. I never rolled the ball over good. <laughs> you, you and several <laughs> others. Yeah. yeah, virtually all pitchers in the American League. Anybody who's got a 305 lifetime average has been doing something right. Houston slaps it to... Hamlin. Boy, Hamlin's had a lot of plays over the last two days. That's uh, one out. The big thing about Brett is if he sat on a pitch, he could hit it out. And otherwise, even being defensive, he could flare it to left or flare it to right and give you a lot of trouble. You weren't going to strike the man out. Jim Kern really, I, I would say, Norm, you, you've been here the whole time. I'd say the first of the really good closers that the Rangers had, and then yep. Russell and, of course, now Hanky. I would I'd say you put those three right up there that had the great, greatest success here. Well, let me tip one hat to a guy before Kearney. There wasn't a lot to save for Steve Foucault when he was well, here. Well, that's, that's true, too. <laughs> he had 18 one year, but he probably had 19 opportunities that particular year. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> no balls in a strike to Manuel Lee. It's kind of like Cleveland. It's hard to get a 40-game uh, save in Cleveland. Might not be hard soon, though, Kearney. I know. Well, the only, you know, the only guy I really saw put up a lot of saves on the board consistently with a bad team was Suter with Chicago. He'd get 35 opportunities and 37 saves. Well, he invented that pitch before anybody else was using it. There's a fly ball to left field. It's over toward the line. McReynolds racing, slashing, and not getting there. Well, that's what's so amazing about uh, Harvey this year in Florida, saving literally everything the Marlins have to save. Yeah, and if we get a closer like that, you tend to go to him. Uh, surprisingly, I had 29 saves in 79. Sparky had 13, and Racich had two. So we had a lot of saves. That was a bullpen effort in 79. Any, when, any one of you guys shaved that year? Uh, no, I can't think of one, to be honest. <laughs> That's, you named three guys that really didn't buy a lot of razor blades that year. <laughs> no, it was funny. You know, I did an interview for Racich one day in New York, too. <laughs> they thought you were... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a slash up the middle. Manuel Lee with a base hit. Now, what happened is I'd gotten bombed on a Saturday in New York during the day. Sunday, I didn't want to go out in the field and get hooted at, you know, all during batting practice. Razor had played there. We were both about 6'6". I might have weighed 40, 50 pounds more than Razor, but we switched uniforms. And everybody was screaming at him in the outfield, and he thought it was funny. And Cable from New Jersey come over and said, Razor, we'd like to do an interview with you here for the Cable. So I thought, should I? Of course. Got a left-handed glove, put it on, did the whole interview for Razor, the only one he had in four years. <laughs> By the way, we should point out the groundskeeper's rake also weighed 20 pounds more than Dave Razor. Yeah, I know it, yeah. <laughs> well, that's why it was <laughs> affectionately called Razor. <laughs> he used to have this uh, T-shirt I loved that said, beauty is only skin deep, but ugly is to the bone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is David Hulse. Uh, Jim Kern is with us here in the booth. i got to ask you a question. Uh, columnist Jennifer Briggs says you are the one who contributed to her delinquency by giving her snuff when she was a young ball girl here at Arlington State. No, actually I didn't contribute at all. After one night of snuff, she never tried it again and never wants to. <laughs> I was a positive force in her life. I see. Okay, well she's of course, uh, she may be stopping by later. She is very nostalgic about this park because she came over here with her dad when it was Turnpike Stadium and has written a lot of nice articles about it. Well, she'd always do the Cotton Eye Joe with all of them that year in 79. I got a question for you. In fact, this came from the truck. When your arm went for the last time or when you was about to go for the last time, was it here? Yeah, it was second game of the season, 83. I was with Chicago. Uh -huh. Two and one pitch to Hostetler, Buddy on first, and everything came apart. You know, in the day and age of videotape, I remember the two ugliest pieces of tape I've ever seen is the broken ankle of... John Ellis. Uh, of, uh, no, of uh, uh, Theismann. Mm -hmm. well, football. Yeah. And, in football. And your arm, because on that tape, you could literally see it go. Yeah, you know, when I threw it, I got just about the top of the windup, started to load up, and everything came loose. And the only thing I really uh, remember is 
is down the way here. Uh, I was be halfway to second base. Two balls and two strikes. Houston is the hitter. And, and Manuel Lee is the runner at first base. Sounds like they listened to my radio show. Yeah, we have some bleeding through our headsets here. We're hearing practically a soap opera, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think they got it corrected. Two balls and two strikes. The runner at first goes. The throw is high, but it's there, and he's out. Well, there was a good throw. Show yeah, some right, on right there on the money. Manuel Lee did not have a chance, as it turned out. It was a straight steal. The, count, the ball was taken by Halswell. We're assuming it was a straight steal, not a missed sign. Sometimes that's an assumption that you shouldn't make. Yeah, that, that looked like a run and hit because he really looked back to see if he had swung. Well, there's no longer a runner on the bases now. Two outs, three balls and two strikes to Hulse. Manuel uh, had stolen two out of five, two out of six. That's it. Hulse strikes out. Amazing Emu, we want to thank you for stopping by, and I know we will see you in the spring with college baseball and HSC. Appreciate being here, and it's great to see the stadium one more time. One more time. We'll be back. There's the new home next year. In a game rich with traditions, Sherwin-Williams has created one of its own by preserving and protecting the national shrines of our national pastime. This is the paint of the pros. And it's the choice of millions of fans at home. And while your town may not have a big league ballpark in it, it does have a big league paint store. The pros know. Ask Sherwin-Williams. Do Texaco Food Marts really have everything? Oh, they have gum, cheese, candy. Many reasons I come to Texaco. Chips, cereals, nice people. There are many, 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 many reasons. You want it? They got it. If they don't have it, you don't need it. And that candy that pulls product out. Did I skip something? Visit your Texaco station and food mart for unbeatable System 3 gasoline. Pop comes here for System 3, and I come here for Pop. Right, Mom? And just about everything else. I'd recommend it to anybody, and I would too. Hey, fans, you know that big event that happens every year at the end of the baseball season when the American and National Leagues battle for the championship? Well, here's your chance to see it in person in the Laquita Fall Finale Getaway. La Quinta Inns and HSE will send two lucky viewers to games one and two of this year's fall finale. To enter, just send a postcard with your name, address, and phone number to La Quinta's fall finale getaway. And remember, at La Quinta Inns, you're not staying at a hotel, you're staying with us. Shoot Wrestling is coming to America only on pay-per-view, only on October 5th. Shoot Wrestling, it's real, not suitable for younger audiences. As we go to the fourth inning with no score, it'll be McRae, Brett, and Hamlin. You can see these guys come to the plate. We want to bring in another special guest, the one on the left. We talked with Fergie Jenkins yesterday, and today we're joined in the booth by Gaylord Perry. This, uh, the two Hall of Famers got replicas of the flags that fly over this ballpark and will also fly over the new ballpark starting next year, and they were honored before the game. Gaylord Perry is up here with us as the first pitch is hit the center field by McRae. And that's out number one. Well, I'll tell you what, good timing here because George Brett is coming up and he's going to be joining you and, and Ferguson in the Hall of Fame in uh, five years. And you had the opportunity, I don't know if you call it opportunity, to pitch against him, but also play with him. He's quite a player. Yeah, I was very fortunate to finish up playing with him because uh, I really got to know him personally. I really uh, love the guy uh, playing against him because he's such a competitor. Uh, I just, I walked him a whole lot. <laughs> Make, don't let him beat you, huh? Uh, he's, he's quite a competitor. He knows what to do with the ball, and we finally just started pitching up and away and let him hit that way. Gillard, do you like pitching in this park? Uh, yeah, you had a uh, first part of the game before they had all the windbreakers up here. You had to pitch left-handers away very much, and uh, but uh, it was a decent ballpark. Do you like the heat? Uh, not quite 115. <laughs> well, my, my thought was, though, the hotter it was, the more you'd perspire, and you could do more with perspiration than most people I knew. I know what you're leading up to, but <laughs> <laughs> you dirty old guy. <laughs> Brett, it's a fly ball left field. Gonzalez racing over for it, and that's uh, going to put George away for the second time. You keep pretty busy these days. Once you once you get that HOF, that Hall of Fame behind your name, boy, you get called on to go a lot of places and see a lot of things, don't you? Yeah, you do. It's been. Uh 
been very busy the last uh, two and a half years, and uh, we'll look forward to it. I'm going to kind of uh, back off a little bit now. Since George and Nolan's retired, I'm retiring from the old-timers game today. Oh, this was your yeah. last old-timer game as an active yeah. participant? Yesterday was my last one. Yeah. I want to retire with George. What are you going to do with that jersey? <laughs> Hang it up in the closet. <laughs> If you haven't seen it, he's got one that's got the logos and the, the of every team he played for in the major leagues, and that makes it kind of heavy, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it was eight of them. So <laughs> I was gonna say, if you'd have moved once more, you'd have to use, start using the side panels. <laughs> I was trying to, but couldn't get nobody to let me do it. You know, I really loved the game. I played. I was very lucky to play 22 years up here. But uh, boy, what a game to play! You meet so many good uh, friends that way. I still have a, a one of the T-shirts they gave out on the night you got to 300 that said Gaylord Perry 300 wins is nothing to spit at. I don't know where they got that from either, but <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a great shirt and uh, we had a lot of fun with it. Well, there's the flag that uh, flies in the this ballpark in the left field corner and uh, Ferguson Jenkins down the right side. Hamlin fouls it back. One ball and two strikes. The uh, game that was played yesterday and brought back a lot of guys that you probably hadn't seen for years. How many of them did you still recognize after the uh, passage of time? Well, you, you start asking some of your, your buddies, who is that walking in? <laughs> you know, that's the first time we've seen Alex Johnson in, gee, I guess 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> it was good to see Alex. That's a foul ball. Yeah. It, you haven't seen somebody for a while. And then there are always the exceptions. We, we used this yesterday. We talked about a lot. Guys like Toby Hera, who wears the same uniform yeah. he wore in 74. They the same. He really does, and Roy Howell's even thinner than when he played, and uh, it makes it tough on us guys. To <laughs> Somehow we don't shed it as easy as they do. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. Yeah, that's uh, that's a thing that I think that's uh, most amazing to me is taking a look at some of these guys. And some of these guys, uh, they really take that seriously. I guess that's probably one reason why it's time to retire, huh? G yeah. Gaylord, as we watch a young man named Dreyer pitch on the mound, this is your last visit to this park. Will you tell us yes or no whether you were always drier or whether it was a little wet once in a while? This was a good good day for me. Grass oh. is wet. Grass is wet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Outfield's wet. Uh huh. Nice humidity. Yeah. Uh huh. So uh, they couldn't blame it all on me. That <laughs> a little Mr. Rain would be even better, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Three balls and two strikes. Two outs here in the top of the fourth. There is no score. As Hamlin pops it back into the but crowd. You know, I perfected the puff ball here. Yes, of course, with the rods yeah. on the back. And El Power will come out and he start complaining about it. About the puff ball. I said, look, you bitch about it being so wet. Now I got it dry and you're bitching about it now. So what what do you want me to do? He just threw his hands up and walked back. And what can they say? There's nothing in the books on that. I knew the umpire's better than anybody. <laughs> who who was the best searcher amongst the umpires? Well, probably uh, Bill Kunkel, and uh, we, we even did commercials together. And, uh, he, he was a fun guy to do with. In fact, we did a commercial in Cleveland one time, and uh, Ray Foster, the catcher, and they came out and examined it doing a commercial, went back, said they found nothing. The next day I was pitching, look up, and he's, he's the umpire behind the plate. About the fifth inning, he comes out and goes right through the commercial. <laughs> There's a high pop back behind the plate. That'll be in the stands you off know, the bat of Gaiety. I was amazed. Back in the 70s, there was a wonderful commercial for Gillette hairspray. And it was the wet look versus the dry look. And I was always amazed they never got you to do that. Well, I tried that. I tried Vaseline, KY jelly. <laughs> they were never baseball fans. They, just, <laughs> they didn't like baseball, evidently. <laughs> <clears throat> No balls at a strike here to Gaetti, who singled the first time. The only hit so far for Kansas City. Nothing in two. Now, they made a good pickup when they picked up Gaetti. He's done, uh, you know, got some big runs for him. Really did. He had a home run yesterday, and they, they got him really off the heap. I think uh, people in California thought that maybe he didn't have much left, but he has done a good job for Kansas City. That's what seven clubs got me for. They said that about you. Seven yeah. teams said, well, he doesn't have much left. <laughs> <laughs> And the eighth one was right. Yeah. <laughs> eighth one was mean. I said, that's enough. <laughs> no balls and two strikes. Well, you played a, you broke in with a great, you know, while we look at the pennant race with the Giants and the Braves, you broke in with a great San Francisco contingent, didn't you? Oh, I surely did. Uh, 
you had Mays in center, and you had the Lose out there, and then Bonds came later, and McCovey at first, and Pater was there for a while, uh, Jim Ray Hart. Body Shaw. Yeah, played wow. with a lot of them. Gaylord Perry's better guest. want to thank you for stopping by, Gaylord, and congratulations on the rest of your life off the old-timers game. Thanks very much. Thank Go you find you a dry know, seat, Gaylord. All, all right, buddy. We'll be back. We'll introduce the all time Fun, easy, inexpensive, and ingenious. That's what coaches and experts say about solo tennis. Improves all tennis skills. Form, timing, speed, confidence, strength, and endurance. How does it work? Just hit the ball and solo tennis will return it to you every time. Who can play? Anyone of any age. Simple enough for a novice, yet challenging enough for an expert. Where can you play? Anywhere. No backboard or tennis court is needed. Solo tennis is a fun, exciting game you can play anytime. Tennis USTA Magazine says... Take full natural strokes and the ball comes back to you every time. Inside Tennis Magazine calls it... Simple yet innovative. Solo tennis, called the best invention in 20 years by World Tennis Magazine, is now available for only $19.95 plus shipping and handling. For fast delivery, just call the toll-free number on your screen. Solo tennis comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Order yours today. RCA Home Theater comes with a new optimum contrast screen. A black of blacks, brilliant whites, and a picture so clear and bright, you'll feel like you're really there. Taking a look from uh, the new to the old. Our fan cam is uh, shooting from the ballpark in Arlington to give you one of the last looks at Arlington Stadium. Barry's Cameron Video now has a new location located at the corner of Cooper Street and Arbrook Boulevard across from the Park Mall in Arlington. Remember, at Barry's Cameron Video, the expertise is free. And there's a reverse view of the ballpark in Arlington. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It'll be Strange, Palmero, and Gonzalez. And we also have yet one more guest here in the booth. Another of those who will be honored following the game as a member of the Ranger all-time team as the center fielder. And we're talking about Mickey Rivers. Mick the Quick is here uh, taking a look at this ballpark for the last time. How you doing, pal? Oh, uh, great, great, great. Feeling great. It's uh, got to be nice, too, to be recognized by the Ranger fans as uh, the all-time center fielder in this uh, 22 years of this ballpark. Uh, it's a great honor to be recognized by the Ranger fans. People should know that Mickey lives in Florida and does a lot of work for kids in Florida. Definitely. I got my youth foundation program, so, you know, I'm sitting around day in and day out. Strange has uh, grounded out once. He's 0 for 1. Watching you play in the... Uh, yeah, we were going to use... Yeah, Mick had, Mick had his hands ready. He was going to take that one, but it didn't quite get up high enough. <laughs> Now, Mick, if one comes in the booth, well, you're the center fielder in this I league, got so, a chart. That's right. So you take, I take charge. charge. <laughs> I got right field. Norm's got left. You got center, but we want you to take charge. <laughs> one ball and two strikes. High pop-up, right side, foul territory, uh, either Mean or Hamlin. Hamlin will take charge and make the catch. One down. Let me ask you about uh, yesterday. You play in a number of those uh, heroes of uh, baseball games, Mick, and of course uh, yesterday it was your trademark, slashing the ball into the gaps, going to the extra bases. Every year you do that. <laughs> well, you know, I'm still in shape, you know, and I feel good, you know, and I'm not there with the kids on the bases. Uh, every day, you know, taking them in here, going to school, checking the kids out of school and seeing how they're still sticking with the programs, you know, and I, I feel good. Mick, it appears to me you've picked up a step since last we saw you. Well, yeah, you know, I'm starting to feel good now. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Palmero, foul ball. Raffi's 0 for 1. He bounced out unassisted to Hamlin in the first. There's no score in the game. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Chatting with Mickey Rivers in the booth here as uh, he will be honored following the game. We'll be showing you that ceremony, by the way, in which the Ranger all-time team is named and uh, paraded around the park. Mickey spent many, many productive years with the New York Yankees, and it's the last game of the season 
in Yankee Stadium, New York bats in the bottom of the ninth. That is also the last game in the legendary broadcasting career of Ernie Harwell. At 75 years old, broadcasting the last game ever. And being an Ernie Harwell fan, I personally hope that one goes 18 innings. So Ernie gets an extra nine. He's got a chance. He's got a chance. Palmero strikes out for the second out. Both these pitchers really on top of the game. Apier, no surprise, but uh, good news for the Rangers at Dreyer. There's a good story about you coming here. You got traded here, and you arrived during a ball game. Correct. When, when you got here the first night. Tell the story. Well, it was... Uh, they say, well, you come to my room. I say, if any trade come down, let me know. They say, well, we got a trade for you, uh, uh, the Texas Rangers. I say, oh, that sounds good. Or when, when could I leave? They say, well, you leave any time. You want to go home and pack your bags and do stuff? And I say, no. You know, I say, I go right now. So uh, they happened to get me a flight. I went out to the airport, got me a flight, hopped on a plane, got over to Texas about 8, 8, 15, 8, 30. And the driver say, oh, well, you want to go to the hotel? I say, no, take me to the ballpark. Got in the ballpark. Had the uniforms all around the players' locker. Say, well, this is where you'll be at. So now I get into the clubhouse, look at the uniform. And I say, you like to try it on? Try it on, you know. We get the side and all that. Do it. So I hopped in there, put the uniform on. Head and I said, well, you know, I just went to stay the uniform. I say, well, you ready to go back to the hotel? I say, no, I want to stay around and watch the team. So you hung out on the bench? If I can know a couple of guys on the team. And then later on, they said, you want to hit? Later on, I said, oh, you know, I said, sure, I love to hit. <laughs> Said, let me go up to the plate. So I grabbed the bat, started mounting up to the plate. And, and the manager called me back. Hey, Mick, come here, come here, come here. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, uh, you sure you want to hit him? I said, sure. I said, look, I love playing. I hit anybody. I happened to hop up to the plate. Boom. First pitch, boom. Base hit up the middle. We tied the score up. <laughs> That's the debut of Mickey Rivers with the Texas Rangers. The count on Gonzalez is one ball and two strikes. Two outs here in the fourth. There's no score. Hey, Mick, you know what made even perfect for you? If you could play here now, because they're opening a great new horse track right down the road, oh, Mick. Great. I think that would be nice, you know, for the people here. <laughs> yeah, nice for me to get a chance. Mick, to, uh, Mick you'd go down there between at bats. Least. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you don't think Hitchkiss is going to be heading there pregame next year or when it's built? <laughs> Mick, you used to have the greatest Hamburg and cane you go to the track in, I'm telling you. Gonzalez strikes out and retires aside. We want to thank Mickey Rivers for stopping by. We'll be looking for you down on the uh, ceremony following the game. Great, great. Good to see you again, Mick. Mickey Rivers has been up here with us. There's no score. We go to the fifth on HSE. On Southwest Airlines, friends fly free for business, too. For example, if Dunn buys a ticket, Bradstreet flies free. Buy one round-trip ticket at Southwest Airlines' regular low, unrestricted fare, and your friend flies with you free. So if Bausch buys a ticket, Lom flies free. Or if Ben buys a ticket, Jerry flies free. Friends fly free for business. On Southwest Airlines, just plain smart. Remember the waiting list for Maverick season tickets? History tends to repeat itself. So call Metro 214-988-0117 today. Some brewers look out their windows and see skyscrapers. Some don't. safety belt. Why, no. I don't wear my safety belt. Thank you. There you see where the ceremony will take place in the ballpark in Arlington, and we'll have it for you on the HSE following the ball game here. In the meantime, we're getting set for the fifth inning here. We also have some activity around uh, other baseball games. Yes, we do. Lots of uh, scores around baseball. Go to your American League. Whoa, just what Milwaukee and Boston wanted to do. A nice extra inning game to finish the season. By the way, they have just posted a run on the bottom of the ninth. The Yankees beat Detroit. The broadcasting career of Ernie Harwell is over. 
Toronto in Baltimore finishing with a battering of the Orioles. Chicago shuts out Cleveland behind Jason Bure. Minnesota's thumping Seattle 7-2. Griffey does not have a homer. Later, it's California and Oakland. Brent Maine leads off here in the fifth inning for the Royals. Maine is lined out to the left fielder Gonzalez in his first at bat. Boy, don't you know the announcers? All the players are sitting there in that Boston-Milwaukee game as they wander toward 11 and 12 and 13 thinking. Oh. Well, there are a lot of cars packed. Certainly a lot of bags packed. Well, you go into the clubhouse these days and all the bags are sitting down there <laughs> packed because everybody's going to scatter after the season. One ball and one strike. Maine slaps it foul. You know, this it might turn out something like the, the alleged Mercer-Ferguson fight where the guy was offered a dive. You know, and that one's final as Atlanta has clinched at least the tie. You think somebody around the 11th inning would call the other brug out and say, for a hundred, will you groove one to this guy? Ah, no, that's the beauty of the game, the integrity of it. Although, <laughs> there are cases in the history of baseball where that has happened. Not maybe exactly in those words, and not maybe with money changing hands. Boy, Steve Dreyer has been very, very good. He has uh, given up only two base runners, a single by Gaetti in the second, and walk in the fourth inning to Hamlin. And he may end up being his biggest story coming out of this ball game as the, well, maybe not as big. Right now, probably not. <laughs> but he's going to be a big one if he keeps pitching like this. Here's McReynolds. He grounded out in the second to the third baseman, Houston. Houston made a nice play. Now, Manny Lee's going to have to make a nice play. There's the flip throw. Not in time. Palmero tried to come off the bag to help give himself an extra foot or so, but it wasn't timed enough, and it's a base hit. Greg, you know, we talked about the Royals would like to get rid of the enormous salary of McReynolds, but Greg, let me ask you if you'd take this guy. With no offense to McReynolds, this will be the sixth straight year his batting average has dropped, the seventh straight year his homer total has dropped, and the sixth straight year his RBI total has dropped. Wow. It, it, it's hard to buy based on those numbers. Yeah, they may be stuck with him unless he's got some kind of a buyout clause, and not likely. Not likely. Let's take a look at Gagne. Gagne didn't ground out in the third inning. He is uh, 0 for 1. He'd like to hit 280 this year, and he was at 279 coming into the game. And that's foul back. In the next half inning, we're going to be talking with Jennifer Briggs, who, uh, well, you know her as the writer for the Star-Telegram, but she is... Uh, well, she's probably as emotional as anybody about saying goodbye to this ballpark, and we'll talk to her about that. She's written some nice articles and uh, did some talks about her memories of Arlington Stadium from a standpoint of a fan and now later a sports writer. Talk with her in the next half inning. No balls and a strike. Slapped on the ground left side. Houston on the scoop. Bobbles, flyers, and gets him at second base. Just in time on the fourth play to strain. He stuck with it, Jeff did, after an initial problem. Two outs. Hey, Greg, you invented another good one. Blobbles. No, well, but you said it's hit to Houston. He flyers, and that's what he did. Well, he, he did. He, he kind of fired, fired it. That's, that's exactly right. I'll right. put that one down here in the list here. Let's yeah. write that one down. He flyers. Flyers to second. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble is, I come up with all these good invented ones, and... You can't think of them fast enough to use them intentionally, and then you invent a new one. Here's Jose Lean. Lean is grounded out to second base. Takes the first pitch high. It's one ball and no strikes. Temperature's gone up a little bit, 73 degrees. It's uh, more humid than normal here in this part of Texas. But though the skies continue to be overcast, the clouds seem to be a little bit thinner, a little bit brighter. Runner goes at first. Here's the throw from Rodriguez. It is on the money, and he's out of there. So we finish the top of the fifth. Rangers coming up with Franco Rodriguez and Ducey. There is no score. Nolan Lyons at Vegas, Texas. His Lone Star legacy will be cherished forever. Now, Nolan wants to teach his pitching secrets to you from his hometown field. You want to get as high and tall on the mound as you possibly can. Wherever your weakest length is, that's how strong you are. You cannot throw the baseball before your land foot hits the ground. You should not be able to tell by the velocity whether it was out of a stretch or out of a windup. Same way with your curveballs and your changeup. 
Nolan Lions Fastball. Instruction for all ages. Eavesdrop on Nolan and 1993 All-Star Randy Johnson. Where are you down in here? Right. If you take your natural ability and you learn to control your pitches, you will become a better pitcher. We have developed ways to help you do this. Surely to become a collector's item. Order now and receive Nolan's best-selling autobiography absolutely free while supply lasts. Imagine a personal pitching clinic with Nolan Ryan himself. Twice a year during the spring and fall, we experience transmission difficulties. Due to a natural alignment of the sun, our transmission satellite, and our downlink satellite dish. The radiation emitted by the sun overpowers our broadcast signal, causing a disturbance like this. This will occur over a short period, for only minutes a day. We appreciate your understanding and continued enjoyment of the great sports seen here every day. Well, we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. There's no score. Big hubbub here in the stands. Uh, uh, Commentator Rush Limbaugh is making an appearance next door, and the fans saw him. And also, we thought at first it was because of the sign on the scoreboard that said, Happy Birthday to Jennifer Briggs. Jennifer is with us, the uh, writer for the uh, Star-Telegram, but it's not your birthday, right? No, it's not. So, I, was, I was a Christmas baby, and I always wanted to uh, have a birthday that could go on the stadium scoreboard since I was like nine years old. And so I told Chuck Morgan... Let's put it on there the last day, okay? Well, I'm glad you got to see it. You were up here when it happened, because you can thank Chuck personally. As Franco <laughs> Rodriguez and Ducey uh, lead off here in the uh, bottom of the inning, uh, those of you in the Metroplex well aware of Jennifer's writing, but those of you that are watching the network outside the immediate area probably don't know that this is a real kind of emotional day for you, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, I, I grew up here... Um, I saw my first uh, big league game here with my father, and I uh, was the first ball girl. Really? You were the first ball girl? Here? Yeah. Is that right. Um, first ball girl, and uh, pretty much grew up, uh, was raised by ball players during my formative years. Now, let's see. That's real bad, because one of the ball players was the amazing Emu. Now, would you want to be raised by him? Well, he, no. he gave me my first dip of snuff. That was a very unfortunate laugh. A, a real fatherly uh, type thing. Yes. Yeah. They took See, good care of me. First ball girl, it's 22 and <laughs> about... Uh, she, she was no, eight. I keep, I keep moving the dates, like, <laughs> like the age. So we'll be into negative integers before... By, by the way, the first ball game girl for the Rangers, not Turnpike Stadium, right? Yes. Yeah, there's a difference. Well, really seven years or so. Quickly two down and uh, Rodriguez grounds out. Wait, be, we will continue talking about the ballpark. People also should know... That, that this young lady was also, not a lot of people know this, but the people in this area used to enjoy the writing of Betty Ann Stout covering professional wrestling. This was the masked Betty Ann Stout. Give us one line, right. Betty Ann Stout, right. boy. All right, <laughs> Betty Ann is as dead as the stadium. Um, I, I'm going to miss this ballpark to the bottom of my bow, honey. That's <laughs> it, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's Rob Ducey, grounded out of the second. Ah, well, what about the new one, though? we got to talk about the new one, because uh, no matter what you or some others may want, this one is not going to be here anymore. What about the new one? The new one's wonderful. It's a palace. I mean, if you've been in there, it's a, it's a monument to the game, no doubt about that. And uh, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, you look at it now, and you're thinking, oh, you know, like there's trash everywhere, but you go ah. inside, it's overpowering. Well, one of your highlights, I know I've read, uh, when you first became a sports writer, get to go down and sit on that bench. Well, you see where the new bench is going to be. Mm -hmm. You're going to get to sit on, and that's the view out towards center field. And and it's, uh, and, and having gone in there now, you know, beforehand, it's, it's an awesome feeling to, to stand where home plate will be and, and be in just a few hours, probably. Yeah, what's it going to be like uh, with the uh, opening exhibition games? There's one in, on the 1st and 2nd of April, and then the season opener on the 11th. It's going to be electric. It is. It's going to be, a, a, there's going to be a show place here, and uh, not to be too goofy about it, but it's, it's a place to be proud of being and being, getting to be a part of it. I'm pretty pumped about it. Well, that's good. That's good that uh, you got something maybe to uh, maybe not re erase the memories of this ball yard, but at least somewhere where new ones can be uh, manufactured. But Jennifer, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Jennifer Briggs has been our guest. We have finished the top of the or bottom of the fifth inning. There's still no score at Arlington Stadium. In a game rich with traditions, Sherwin Williams has created one of its own by preserving and protecting 
the national shrines of our national pastime. This is the paint of the pros. And it's the choice of millions of fans at home. And while your town may not have a big league ballpark in it, it does have a big league paint store. The pros know. Ask Sherwin-Williams. lots of ways to work up a deep down thirst and with eight flavors there are lots of Gatorade ways to quench it. Because most of our flights are short this is what our meals look like on Southwest Airlines. It's also what our fares look like. Southwest Airlines it's just plain smart. Southwest Airlines has one of the best on-time records in the country. Mr. Smith, you're early. Just something to remember. Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. I remember walking in the Rolling Hills parking lot and seeing the facility in front of me and realizing that for the first time I was a head professional. As the fans continue to celebrate some of their heroes, uh, let's take a look at our trivia question for the day. The final one from Arlington Stadium. Who hit the last home run in RFK Stadium for the Washington Senators, the predecessors of these Rangers? 817-277-0779-277-0004. First person wins the amazing EMU book. See, there we mentioned the name again. Uh, that's 501 Texas Ranger trivia questions or and a copy of the audio cassette, Memories of Arlington Stadium. <laughs> Meanwhile, Steve Dreyer's working on a memory of Arlington Stadium. <laughs> Again, the memories that you have from your final game, your final outing if you're a pitcher, can really make you feel good all winter long. And really, he can feel pretty good already. He's gone five strong innings. And Jose Lean, who grounded out the first time, is the hitter, and he takes one on the outside corner for a strike, one and one, one just, and two. Just a personal thought that I know each of us share. It has been wonderful to do the entire last week here. To let this emotion build toward the end of the season. Yes, it has. It's been great because this has been, as I think we indicated briefly at the on the open, we have a trivia question winner, so thank you for participating. I think the big thing is, you know, you've done a lot of final games here, and I've done a number of them, and there's nothing like this atmosphere. And the thing about this, this atmosphere can carry over now with a winning ball club. First of all, the club kept themselves in the race until the last two weeks. And this atmosphere is the way it's going to be in the future when the club is actually winning pennants. And that could come as easily as early as next year with a new divisional set up. And actually, even without it, it could come as early as next year because this is a solid nucleus to build from. Boy, it certainly is. Jose has struck out and grounded out. Greg, we should also take a minute to thank our fans. They've dropped us notes during the season. She at times at night we've said, anybody know anything about this guy? They've <laughs> and called us they've in. called us and told us. That's right. <laughs> That's an easy way to do it. <laughs> Bouncing ball, Manuel Lee. Luckily, Dreyer didn't get a hand on it. Two down. Oh, he has been very, very good. This... Well, I, I seeing it, we said earlier, Everybody's talking about next season, how the Rangers have to go get this guy, and Rick Kelly's going to be ready, and do they re-sign Charlie Lee Brandt? And nobody has mentioned Steve Dreyer. This kid started at Tulsa. He pitched well. He moved to Oklahoma City. He pitched well. And I think, all in all, you look at his two months here, and you can say he's pitched well here. And I think it's important. A mistake that has been made in the past is that sometimes, uh, because he's pitched well here, then some will say, well, then they won't go out and get anybody. No, they still have to do that because you cannot have too many. Look at what the Braves tried to do. I mean, they tried to get Dennis Martinez, and they already got the best pitching in baseball. You can't have too many because someone's going to break down. Someone's going to have a slump. And so, uh, you know, you can't go to spring training and say, well, these are our five starters. You, you really need to have seven guys maybe that can really be solid competitors for one of those jobs because they're not all going to come through for you. Well, and I think there's also a mistake. You look at Dreyer and you say, oh, he doesn't throw hard enough. Oh, baloney. A lot of guys don't throw hard enough that win 16 and 18 games. Listen, if he's got this kind of control, yep. and this is what they saw in the minors, and this is why 
The minor league people recommended he be the man the Rangers call up. They saw this. He does this in the major leagues. He can win the major leagues. There's no doubt about it. That slapped away. If you keep the hitters off stride, Warren Spawn had the greatest slogan. You know, hitting is, is timing, pitching is upsetting timing. You've seen that many times, but that, in a nutshell, is exactly what it is. You upset timing by mixing speeds, location, and throw strikes. Well, one of the ways to upset timing is to throw like Randy Johnson. That'll upset him. That'll, that'll upset a lot of timing. That'll also upset the guys who play the next day against somebody else, even. There's a fastball, and he threw one past him, and that retires the side. And the fans recognizing that Dreyer is really putting on a show here. They've gone through the top of the sixth. Rangers coming up with Houston Lee and Hulse. Bottom of the sixth on HSU. Did you know Texaco put System 3 in every grade of gasoline? System 3 gets high marks in every grade, which is a lot better than I ever did. My dad says Texaco put System 3 in every grade. I'm in the fourth grade. That's why I always fill up with System 3. <laughs> what do I look like? Don't say it. When it comes to performance in cars both new and old. With System 3, I can get great performance from Beacon Hill to Beverly Hills. Count on every grade of Texaco System 3. Don't try it with any other gasoline. I wouldn't. Who we'll asked you? I'd love to say right now three or four of the designers that we carry, but then you wouldn't be able to save the money that you can save by shopping at the men's warehouse. We have an arrangement with the manufacturers. We will not mention their names on television. You have to come into a men's warehouse store and see for yourself. And quite frankly, when you're in a store for one minute, you'll recognize the brands and you'll understand the savings that's hanging on the rack. I guarantee it. The Men's Warehouse. Call 1-800-776-SUIT. Everyone agrees Ranger games are more fun in a group. Discounts for Ranger games begin with groups of 25 or more on Sunday through Thursday games, and there are special half-price group nights for 40 or more throughout the season. A special feature for groups at Arlington Stadium is the Kingsford Charco Picnic Plaza. Groups can enjoy a catered cookout prior to the game in the Kingsford Charco Picnic Plaza. For more information on the Kingsford Charco Picnic Plaza or group outings, call Metro 817-273-5100. Kingsford Charco, the sure fire. This is for our fans that have missed the dot race. We squeezed in enough time to let you see that Red, put this in your trivia book, has won the final dot race here. <laughs> Red it was. That is, especially for Randy and Annis, who called the other night talk show <laughs> and said his, his wife had become a fan of baseball because she started liking the dot race. How about the elect trivia? We've done that for years, too. We've got the uh, winner of our trivia question uh, tonight, which had to do with who hit the last home run on RFK Stadium for the Washington Senators. Answer, Frank Howard, uh, Mike Kekich. He also hit the first home run in this ballpark. First person with the correct answer, Robert Asher of Fort Worth. He wins the 501 Texas Ranger trivia question, who was the amazing evil in the audio cassette memories of Arlington Stadium. Robert says he lives on Ryan Avenue, so he is a big Ranger fan. And that one was not named after Nolan, like the one outside the ballpark here is now. Jeff Houston leads it off. Jeff bounced unassisted to first baseman Hamlin back in the third inning. Foul back. Jeff playing third base, as uh, we told you earlier, uh, Dean Palmer shut down in the eighth inning. There's a Houston banner. They want him back, too. Well, he's another player that uh, will probably have to win a spot. No balls and two strikes. What a wrecked season for Jeff Houston this yeah. year. Everything went wrong. Shoulder, toe. Jeff saying in a, an article that appeared in the paper this morning that, that he hopes the people who saw him before the Kennedy staff mm -hmm. tell Kennedy that he's a better player than this. That's the tough thing, and that's, that's a good point that he made because all... Uh, all Kennedy and his staff can see is what they see now. And, of course, uh, they haven't seen much. No, they, they see a fragile guy who, when he's played, has looked terribly rusty and not swung the bat well. Two balls and two strikes. He's coming off his best offensive year last year and a real solid year, particularly when he played second base. Ooh, we're going to go to four and two is the count. <laughs> Look at a swing that was ball four. But that's well no come on we don't need cards for this although they are kind of groovy looking Houston fans and that's the 
first out of the inning. We've got six strikeouts for Ray here with uh, no walk. Did I miss one? Seven, I guess, I'm told by our ace graphics man, Kurt Tanker. He is seven. Four for Dreyer. 41,039 attendance, official attendance. That means they sold all the tickets. And most of them have been used. Here's the first pitch that bends over. Rangers thus have the second highest total in the history of Arlington Stadium. 2,244,000 plus. There is a strike to, but uh, that may be the second total, but it's going to be the third total after next year and probably the fourth total after two years from now. Records are going to fall in the ballpark in Arlington. Records are going to fall, too, in Cleveland today. The Indians apparently are going to draw enough folks to wipe out the record set earlier this year for attendance in a three-game series by Colorado. They're going to draw more than 216,000 for three games. Wow. It is amazing, isn't it? Two balls and a strike. That's why the... You know, you read so much uh, commentary and stories about baseball as this. This is in trouble. Uh, the, the, to borrow a phrase, the death of baseball is greatly exaggerated. There is nothing wrong. They have some minor, they have some adjustments that need to be made, but there's nothing wrong. There are some financial questions, and they're big questions, but as far as the hearts of the fans, the fans are still with it. Three balls and two strikes. Ooh, there's the total for Arlington. Yeah, we got 31,714,747. Foul ball. Ooh. That looked like it caught Maine on the arm. Yeah. Just what you needed. One more purple spot headed <laughs> for the offseason, Brent. Heading to the seventh, uh, George Brett will be leading off, and that uh, could be his last at bat, depending on how things go. And I kind of have a feeling if he gets a base hit, it might be. Lee gets the walk. Lee now been on two out of two with a single and a walk. First walk given up by Apier. Take time out to quench your thirst at 7-Eleven, your total beverage center with the best selection of already cold beverages and the variety and sizes you want. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. Today's game also brought to you by Southwest Airlines offering frequent flights and low everyday fares, which is why flying Southwest Airlines is just plain smart. There is Brett. We just got the word that Juan Gonzalez has clinched the home run championship. Griffey's game is over. He did not homer. The uh, only reason that he might want to stay in there a couple more times, besides the fact the Rangers have a chance to win the game, would be to win the Major League Championship. Uh, the, right now he's tied with Bonds, and Bonds, of course, plays in Los Angeles, and that game's just underway. There's a foul ball out of play. That, uh, by the way, that game is now top two, scoreless. It is Solomon Torres, the rookie for the Giants, and Kevin Gross, who's won his last three starts for the Dodgers. David Hulse, who has flied to center and struck out. Slices the ball over to the left side, foul, and uh, into the second or third row of the seats. One, No balls and two strikes. You know, we've talked about the great job Dreyer's done. Well, Apier's been just as good, but the difference is Apier's done this before. By the way, Greg, the uh, Cowboy game is final. It is Dallas 36, Green Bay 14, a club record tying five field goals from Eddie Murray from 33 19 19 50 and 48 sound like a good acquisition that pitch is wide Emmett Smith got one of the touchdowns on a 22 yard run but he left with a hamstring problem in the second oh, half oh hamstrings as we know from this baseball oh. season can be problems for a long time uh, he got to 71 yards on 13 carries for the day just in case Manuel is thinking about it, he tried to steal earlier and was thrown out. Michael Irvin had a huge receiving day. Seven catches, 
for 155 yards and a touchdown. But the Cowboys are now 2-2 two and two and the Packers 1-3. and three. Count still one ball and two strikes. Remember, stay with us after the game, and who knows when this game's going to end since nobody has scored, but stay with us because we're going to have all the ceremonies at uh, home plate here, the introduction of the Ranger all-time team, the digging up of home plate and the transfer of home plate to the new park. Norm's going to go over to the ballpark in Arlington with the first official live telecast from the new ballpark in Arlington. Boy, Greg, have I got a note for you about another team. <clears throat> Let's just say not finishing on a high note this year after this pitch to David Holtz. One ball and two strikes. Again, don't go to the refrigerator. George Brett leads off in the seventh. Greg, is this a fitting way for the season to end for the Mets? They're leading 9-2 in Florida in the bottom of the ninth inning. And we get the note that the game is being delayed by rain. <laughs> Wouldn't you have a tendency to just call that, baby? <laughs> <laughs> they won't wait real long, no. I'll tell you. Uh, by the way, it's gone bottom second in L.A. Nothing, nothing. Frisco the Dodgers. Hughes strokes the ball to center field, but McGray playing shallow has to move just a few steps back. Second out. Good Lord, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat up the line. 27-10. For their first one of the year, Detroit scored the first 10 points of the game in Tampa Bay, the last 27. Doug Strange grounded out and fouled out in his two at bats. The Rangers two hits, a double by Franco, and a single by Manuel Lee, and that is it. They have one other base runner, and he's on right now. That's Manuel Lee who walked. No score in the final game at Arlington Stadium. There's where all games will be played starting next April. The first action April 1st exhibition with those New York Mets, if their game is finished by then. There's a shot. It looked fair. It was, oh, foul ball. I want to see that one. I'll tell you why. The first base umpire makes the call after the ball crosses the bag. I want to see if it was over the bag. Remember that the first base bag is the same as a foul pole doesn't matter where the ball bounces after it crosses the bag if it was actually over the bag. And that's what Kevin Kennedy's going to argue about. Plus the fact, first base umpire Ed Hitchcock, Ed Hitchcock was screened a little bit on that play by both the runner and the first baseman holding the bag. And I'm sure that's what he's talking about. Kevin saying the ball... in his judgment, did not cross the bag. Boy... Remember, it doesn't matter where that bounce is after it crosses the bag. That's quite often mistaken. It matters whether it goes over the top of the bag. It has to bounce before it goes over the bag fair. But then it's just like a foul pole. One ball and one strike. Manuel Lee still at first. The count is even at one and one. Doug Strange the hitter. That's on the outside corner. It is two balls and a strike. There is no score in the game. Manuel Lee with a walk still there after the fly out by Hulse. There are two outs. It appear to be the breaking ball. It's, it wasn't. They're not using different signs as that was not a breaking ball. There's outside and it's two balls and two strikes. Well, here is for the course of this season, the Kevin Kennedy run count. Two balls, two mm -hmm. strikes, two outs. Might as well start the runner. Manuel Lee gets a little extra step. There he goes. The pitch is slashed to left field. Going over for McReynolds. Still going, still going. He can't get it. Here comes Manuel Lee with a mail. He touches third base. And the Rangers have taken a 1-0 lead and a double. got to number 60 and runs that it in and you know what got him there Kevin Kennedy starting the run yeah the 2-2 two -two count if he'd had the double on the ball that he hit down the first baseline it would have just put runners at first and third this time he got him in 
Good pitch. Apier nails down the outside corner. And watch the hit in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> this ball is about five pounds heavier than normal when he picked it up to throw it. So Manuel Lee with a big walk, walks pay off against any pitcher, even the best like Apier. And the Rangers have a lead. You know the, what this points up, Norm, is how important good pitching is because if your pitching is good enough and you stay with the game, you can even beat the good guys. Mm -hmm. But if your pitching is going to give up four runs early and you're going against a guy like Apier, you don't beat him. Well, what's marked the Ranger run down the stretch and why they were able to keep pressure for so long on the White Sox is that down the stretch, Rogers, Pavlik, and Brown were just terrific pitchers. And now Dreyer's chipped in with a couple of really good efforts late. Don't forget, we got some big action coming up later tonight. The CISL Soccer Championship, same day delay, 11 o'clock tonight. The sidekicks and the soccers here on HSE. Big sports action this weekend on HSE as we see Rafael Palmero now with a runner in scoring position. One run in, two outs, and he foul tips it. Maine takes a beating on that one. Boy, here's a shock. Philadelphia lost today when Mitch Williams wild pitched in the winning run. <laughs> he hadn't thrown any of those. No, it hardly ever happens. There's your <laughs> Cleveland attendance again. 72,390. Boy, there were some seats in there that I'm surprised they moved that have never been used. They had some people sitting on laps to get 72,390. Well, they have left the Browns now some numbers to shoot at. The Browns will be the sole tenants of the Cleveland Stadium. Fly ball left field. Well, Palmero has no chance of hitting 300 this year. He just likes to end, I think, with a base hit. That retires the side. The Rangers get one in the six. This is the left field corner. You see that area with the glass. That's the press box area looking down onto the field of the ballpark in Arlington, the new home of the Rangers starting next season. We'll be back with the seventh in just a moment. My family has been brewing beer around here for 120 years. Every now and then, I think that's a big accomplishment. That's when it's time to come out here. It's nice to get a little perspective. spreading across Texas. Texas Hot Cash from the Texas Lottery. Uh -oh. Anybody, the fire extinguisher over here. <laughs> Match $3 amount. <laughs> and you can win up to $2,500. It's on the camera. <laughs> Texas Hot Cash. Cover up the camera. Quick, cover the camera. When we say hot, we mean it. Hot, hot, hot. Never thought about transmission wear? Time to shift mental gears. Try one of these special treatments from Slick 50, the transmission wear protector. HSE wants you to celebrate a decade of sports, 10 years of entertainment by joining the team with these collector's edition caps and t-shirts. Join the team. The HSE phone lines have been swapped with calls for these special edition collectibles, just like the HSE crew wear. Join the team. Call 1-800-423-2121 to get on the team. Caps and t-shirts only $12.95 each or both for just $21.95. Only a limited number of these collector's caps and t-shirts are available, so call and order today. Get on the team. George Brett may be his last at bat. He's 0 for 2, 0 for 10 in the series. And he grounds the second base. There's a story about that one. If, in fact, that is his last at bat. That's what he said on his last at bat he wanted to do. Ground a second. He says he's probably done that more than anybody in history. He's getting a standing ovation as he goes to the dugout. Actually, he wanted it to be with a runner at second base and nobody out, so he's moving the runner over, but he couldn't help it that he had to lead off the inning. But he kind of jokingly said that he's probably hit more balls at second base than anybody in the history of the game. You know, <laughs> 
imagine if you would what Steve Dreyer is going to be able to tell his grandchildren. I was the last guy that pitched to George Brett if he goes the route. Yeah. I was the guy that replaced Nolan Ryan when he walked off the mound. I was the guy that closed Arlington Stadium. I was the guy that walked Nolan's last batter. Too. I was the guy that walked <laughs> Nolan's last batter. And right now, I was the guy that pitched the last shutout and got the last win in Arlington Stadium. You are writing this down at home because, again, we're talking about maybe last. There's Strange, and Dreyer gets the first two out on the seventh. What a job he is doing. And he is getting recognized for it. They have just put up on the board that Juan Gonzalez has won the home run championship. That's what the fan reaction is for. happy here's Gary Gaetti why, why didn't they whittle Gonzalez came to bat <laughs> but leading off the next inning <laughs> well actually I'm thinking one way it's better not to do it that way because this way his mind uh, you know he knows he can be much more relaxed no emotions other than watching what the pitcher is going to throw it Gaetti hits one high to the new home run champion second year in a row in the American League let's see if he's paying attention <laughs> he makes the catch and that retires the side. So we have gone through the top of the seventh. Rangers coming up in the bottom of the seventh, and Mr. Gonzalez will lead it off with Franco and Rodriguez to follow. It's tough being a fan when your team isn't the home team, especially when I try to find coverage of my favorite team in the local paper. I'm lucky if I can find last week's score. If you're like me, you'll be happy to know there's one publication that'll make you feel right at home. The Sporting News. You'll love the Sporting News, no matter what team you love, even if it is the home team. Call this number now and get four issues of the Sporting News free. You'll get opinions and analysis, team-by-team -team reports, and coverage of all the college conferences. Plus baseball, basketball, and hockey all year long. Call now and you'll get four free issues of the Sporting News. If you like them, you'll get 24 more issues at this great TV price. If not, just mark the bill, cancel, and owe nothing. The four issues are yours to keep. So call now for the Sporting News, the publication that treats every team like the home team. Call now and you'll get four great issues of the Sporting News free. Call 1-800-592-1222. in this ball game. If he could crack 47, he would have a shot at being the major league champion another year. As it is, he's tied. Average right now, 311. Rangers only run coming back in the sixth on a double by Doug Strange after Manuel Lee walked. I wonder how many people went to the noon kickoff of the Cowboys, watched that half and came over here. I bet you there were some. A lot of people here now. Gonzalez cool again, no balls and two strikes. I wonder what the attendance figure is going to be in Dallas Fort Worth when you add sold out Rangers, yeah. sold out Cowboys, sidekicks tonight, Trinity Meadows racing, and the big gymnastics exhibition with all the best gymnastics uh, gymnasts in the world at SMU tonight. 
120, 125,000? Yeah. Real good chance. Way wide with the pitch. One ball and two strikes. One ball and two strikes. And he strikes out. Well, on the day that he wins the home run championship, he fans three times, but Rangers at least have the lead. One nothing. Let's take a look at the scoreboard here on the seventh inning stretch brought to you by your neighborhood 7-Eleven store. Oh, boy, the Milwaukee and Boston announcers must be really happy about going into the 13th in Fenway in this last game of the season. Mike Stanley's base hit in the bottom of the ninth. That's the last game Ernie Harwell announces as a Tiger announcer. In Baltimore, Toronto warms up for the playoffs thumping the Orioles. Franco has a double and two at-bats. It is, as I said, conceivable that Franco may be having his last at-bat here at Arlington Stadium. Anybody with a contract up is always a possible that they would not be back. Joe Carter hit his 32nd and 33rd in this game, and Hoyles his 29th. Chicago beats Cleveland 4-2 for Jason Ber I'm sorry, that should be 4 nothing for Jason Bray. Minnesota wins for Kevin Tappany, and Oakland's gotten three in the first for Bobby Witt. And they lead California 3-1. Julio. Well, they, they hope he's here, too. Those guys brought a bunch of signs out there. It's the same people. One ball and two strikes. And that one's wide. It is two balls and two strikes. We've discussed the two free agents, Palmero and Franco. We should discuss a third. Gino Petralli's also going to be free at the end of the season, and only two men have ever spent more time on the Ranger roster than Petralli, and that's Jim Sundberg and Toby Harrow. Franco slashes it back. Uh, once again, it's a case where I think if everything were equal, Kevin Kennedy would like to have most of all the same people back next year. The problem is everything isn't equal when you get into contracts and free agency and mm -hmm. things of that nature, and there will be some changes that uh, aren't necessarily made for the same reasons they used to be made back in the 50s. By the way, Kennedy has also informed ownership that he would like them to pick up the option of Chris James' contract to bring him back as a spare part outfielder. Like what year. he showed him on the road. The strikeout of Franco, and they're two outs. You know, interesting sideline on Chris. He's been with the club, what, two weeks? Mm -hmm. Hasn't played a home game. <laughs> and yes. he won't, it appears, because of the and injury. Uh, we've been talking about how good Dreyer has been. Well, Apier hasn't been too shabby. Only three hits allowed. He's now struck out two in a row here. And Rodriguez is one of them. He's one for or 0 for two. He struck out on the second and grounded out on the fifth. <laughs> Rodriguez will hit over 270 this year. He's at 273 now and over two. Kevin Kennedy's announced that he wants his entire staff back, but the morning news today reporting that that man, batting coach Willie Upshaw, they may have to fight to keep that Toronto may be interested in rehiring Willie Upshaw to go to the Blue Jays staff. Gee, John Olrud did okay without him this year. Yeah. John's uh, going to win the batting championship. Came into today hitting 363 and had a 31-point lead over Paul Molitor. Kevin Kennedy last year, if there's an if there's an opening on his staff, last year wanted to hire Tim Johnson away from the Expos, who's probably his best friend in baseball. He is the dugout coach to Philippe Alou, but today the Expos announced Johnson had been invited back to the staff next year. Ten strikeouts for Apier. The Rangers are struck out in order in the seventh. We'll go to the eighth. It's one nothing Texas. Yo, check it out. Here's what I gotta know. Did you guys come out and play or what? Oh, showtime! Come on, hey! Yo, can you get a raid in the house, y'all? This thirst is getting deeper. Get a raid! Can you quench my thirst all the way to the soles of my side? If you come out to play without your Gatorade, you better call your mother to pick you up. Gatorade thirst for it, just for that deep down body thirst. There's a place where we all come together to sell our goods. 
marry our children, mourn our dead, to reveal our villains and heroes. It's the place we all share. It's the story of all of us. The Dallas Morning News. Just look for an unusually large wingspan and very distinctive coloring. Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. Texas is such a big state that to really succeed in business, you'd have to give every business person a company plane. So that's what we did. Southwest Airlines, it's like having your own company plane. Shoot Wrestling is coming to America only on pay-per-view, only on October 5th. Shoot Wrestling, it's real, not suitable for younger audiences. There you see the uh, ballpark in Arlington, and now let's take a look at the upcoming Rangers schedule. That's right, there will be one. Uh, it won't be till next year. Uh, the ballpark at Arlington and the, some selected road games scheduled to be announced uh, in the early spring of 94. We'll be back. We'll tell you which ones when the time comes. That park will be in uh, various stages of dismantling by next year, but it won't be gone. And, uh, boy, you know the folks who own that hotel, they kind of had a pretty good That's location, fun, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. The new park, they've moved 78,000 truckloads of dirt. They've poured 60,000 cubic feet of concrete, 4,800 tons of steel, and they bought 40,000 gallons of green paint. That's the color scheme for the walls, you can bet, huh? <laughs> I, I would say so. If it isn't, there's going to be a bunch of trim, Greg. That's the traditional color of ballparks and seats. And the fly ball on the first ball pops left side. Jeff Houston says, come down, please. It does. One out. Well, I, hey, if the season started tomorrow, Steve Dreyer would be in my rotation. How about yours? Tell you what, he's... Uh, Pitching in place of Nolan Ryan and uh, except for the strikeout, and Nolan couldn't have done any better. Steve has only given up two hits, one walk, four strikeouts. McReynolds, the hitter. McReynolds was retired on a sparkling play by Houston back in the second inning and then singled in the fifth. So he's hit the ball well both times. By the way, as it stands right now, Doug Strange has the last hit in this ballpark. And the last home run is Ducey's yesterday. The last strikeout is whoever faces Kevin Apier last. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> one ball and one strike. It doesn't look like he's going to be touched anytime soon from the last couple of innings. One and two, I'll tell you. Uh, it looked like uh, McReynolds had him figured out with a couple of well-hit balls, and now he's uh, been fooled badly. And again, actually what Dreyer's doing, what we talked about, what Apier does. He's got a lot of different pitches, and he moves them around and cuts the corners with them. That ball's hit hard, though. So uh, a little premature in saying that Reynolds had been stopped because he's going to go into second base Hurry, with Kevin. a close double. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if that ball, if it had not been wind or muddy out there, there's no way he gets a double on that. The ball slowed down, and you got to see Ducey's arm. First off, Kevin McReynolds barely avoided embarrassment on the last day of the season. About halfway to second base, he coasted, assuming, oh, this guy can't make this even close. Todd Osteen's going to come out and check with uh, some activity starting in the bullpen. But just starting. Here's the attendance story uh, for 1993, 2,244,616 at all time in 22 years. 31,714,746. And 41,000 or so of them are here right now. The conference breaks up. Ranger bullpen, as we said, it's Hinky that's loosening. There you see an update from the pennant race. Base hit by Dave Hansen, drives in Dodger pitcher Kevin Gross. And Atlanta's starting to get just a little bit encouraged. There's Hanky loosening up in the Ranger pen. Got to get Gagney out. Now, Gagney has uh, bounced unassisted to Palmero and hit into a fielder's choice. 
Fly ball, deep left field toward the line, curving toward the line. It is a fair ball home run. Greg Gagne with a two-run homer, and the Rangers trail it two to one. Gagne has put the Royals on top on the first pitch. Dreyer giving up his seventh home run at a bad time with a runner on base. And Gagne, now uh, the holder of the final home run of the ballpark. Ground ball out to second base off the bat of lean. Two outs. But by the way, that assures George Brett will bat in the ninth inning. Oh, just oh. hung it. Yeah. Actually, it wasn't a strike, though. It wasn't a bad pitch, actually. Gagne got around on a ball up. Well, it was and a bad in. pitch. It wasn't oh, yeah. a strike. It was a ball. What I'm saying is, from a pitcher standpoint, you don't figure that ball gets hit out of the park. Well, first of all, you're surprised if he does hit it, he can keep it fair. Here's Jose, and Jose hits the ball hard to left field. Gonzalez is on the horse, back toward the wall. Looking up, it's off the base of the wall. Ball picked up there by Hulse and returned to the infield on a double by Jose. And it would seem that uh, the string is out here for Dreyer, who's pitched a fine game. And Kevin Kennedy has to make a decision. Brian McCray, the hitter, next. A lot of lineup checking. A lot of defense checking. If you're Kennedy, you'd have loved to have left Ryer in to get the, the side out in the eighth and give the Rangers a chance to rally, win the game for him. Well. Either the conference with Rodriguez has been directed to stall or wait till they get either Patterson or Whiteside ready. Henke was up, but he sat down once the Rangers fell behind. Or he's going to go one more here and see if he can get McRae and end the inning. And that would appear to be the case. Off the hands of some fans below us. No balls and a strike. McRae has grounded out, flied out, and struck out. Royals have two runs, five hits, no errors. The Rangers one run, three hits, no errors. Chopper to the right side, and uh, he'll get out of the inning. Two runs score, however. The Rangers now have to come from behind been a good game for Dreyer, but I know he's disappointed as the Rangers come up on the bottom of the eighth. It'll be Ducey, Houston, and Lee do up. Rangers down by a run. If there's one thing a professional painter can say to a do-it-yourself, it's this. Don't do it yourself. Get some help. Ask Sherwin-Williams. The answer? Good paint, good price, and good advice. Guaranteed. I rely on these guys for almost everything. You know, a professional painting crew wouldn't even start a job until they got all the help they needed. You shouldn't either. The pros, no. Ask Sherwin Williams. There's a hot new game spreading across Texas. Texas Hot Cash from the Texas Lottery. Uh -oh. Anybody, the fire extinguisher over here. <laughs> Match three dollar amounts. And you can win up to $2,500. It's on the camera. Texas Hot Cash. Cover up the camera. Quick, cover the camera. When we say hot, we mean it. Hot, When you work one job, grab a quick lunch, a quicker dinner, and move on to job number two. How are you going to spell relief? That's a big relief you can feel, because Rolaids absorbs 47 times its weight in excess stomach acid to stop heartburn fast. So for millions, there's only one way to spell 100% relief. Rolaids spells 100% relief. A decade of sports, 10 years of entertainment, HSE. A simple and succinct. 
the Dallas Morning News Sports Day front page news. Goodbye to Arlington Stadium. Catch all the action in Sports Day every day only in the Dallas Morning News. And the headline on opening day next year, our first telecast will be, hello. <laughs> Let's go to the bottom of the eight. The Rangers now down by a run uh, with uh, Ducey, Houston, and Lee. Oh, the Rangers right fielder, Rob Ducey. Well, Ducey had the last home run in this ballpark until Gagne just hit one. Uh, maybe he hit another one. Although that's a tough act against Apier. Apier has only given up three hits. The Rangers have two chances now to get at least one run. And the first pitch is a strike. Meanwhile, down in the Royals' pen, the snuffer up and at work again. Why well, it would be nice if the Rangers could get one, hit one out of the park before he could make any changes. It's hard to get a rally going and not get Montgomery in in time. Well, we can drag out that stat one more time this season if you'd like. About the Royals and the yep. ninth inning. One run, uh, one ball and one strike. The Rangers don't get a run here. They would trail into the ninth. In games Kansas City's led into the ninth this year, they are 64 and 0. Last year, their record in games they led into the ninth, they were 64 and 0. Fly ball deep to the track, but that's all to the track, and it's caught one out. Dating all the way back to late 1991, the Royals have won 144 straight games in which they led going to the ninth. Update from L.A. Eric Karros double drove in Dave Hansen. The Giants did get out of a minute second and third and two out jam in that inning, but the Dodgers have the lead. Well, the Giants have done it to the Dodgers on the last day before. Now the shoe's on the other foot. Dodgers have a chance. Houston drops down a bunt. Guy, he was looking for it. He was actually coming in uh, and makes the play two down. Good idea by Jeff to get a base runner, but Guidi made the play. The bunt was a little hard. Two outs. Now Manuel Lee. Well, if the Rangers don't get anything going here in the eighth, in the ninth they will at least have the top of the batting order. And a chance to see Palmero maybe one last time. Ranger fans certainly hope that's not the case. Well, we're going to see George one more time. Yeah, George will be leading off. George Brett. He hasn't had a hit in the series, and so this is his last chance, uh, barring the Rangers tying in an extra innings. One ball and no strikes to lead. Base hit, Manuel Lee. He has really finished strong, and there's another guy that the Rangers can be happy with the way it finished for him. Two for two with a walk in this game. He has scored the Rangers' long run, and David Hulse will be the hitter. The Rangers have a lot of ups this season. David Hulse coming to the plate has proven he can lead off and play center field. Roger Pavlik and Kenny Rogers have proven they can start and start effectively. Maybe we should also add that man to the list of the brightest lights of the season. Kevin Kennedy has proven he can manage very well in the major leagues. Piloted only the second Ranger team into second place for first time since 19, I should say, 1986 in the second place. And with a great deal of adversity, a great deal of adversity. Remember, this everyday lineup was going to be Gonzalez, Hulse, and Canseco in the outfield. Palmer, Lee, Ripken. Liner retires the side, so the bat... The uh, at-bat by Hulse last one pitch. We have gone through eight. It is Kansas City two. The Rangers one. Here comes George Brett one last time. Attention women golfers. Your best game yet is about to happen. Guaranteed. How? Through the expert instruction you'll find in the pages of Golf for Women magazine. It's jam-packed with easy-to-follow tips and techniques that will help you perfect your backswing. Fine-tune your putting. Even explode out of the bunker in a single shot. Plus, each issue keeps you up to date on equipment, travel, fashion, and more. In fact, Golf for Women magazine has been so successful at helping millions of women get the most out of golf that we offer this unconditional lifetime guarantee. 
If Golf for Women magazine doesn't cut strokes off your game, improve your swing, knowledge, and enjoyment of golf, we'll refund the full subscription price you paid at any time. And if you order now, you'll get two full years for the price of one. That's two years for just $12.97 plus $3 postage and handling. Order today for yourself or a friend. It's like having your own personal golf pro at your side. Call now, 1-800-423-2121. High Speed Wednesday, NASCAR's best gear up for the time trials of the Mellow Yellow 500 live. Then it's live racing excitement at the Winston Sportsman 100. Racing action begins Wednesday night at 6 on HSE. Don't miss a single second of SWC action. Coaches, players, and previews. No matter what the sport, it's all right here on This Week in the Southwest Conference. Wednesdays at 6 and Saturdays at 9.30 on HSE. will be coming to the plate for the last time in this ballgame. The crowd reacting right now to a video that's on the screen, some of the highlights of Nolan Ryan's career. But you can be sure that when George Brett comes to the plate, again, the crowd will give him a great ovation. He's going to have a tough time because Tom Hinkie has come in to pitch here in the ninth inning for the Rangers. But if George has his way, his team will win. And if his team wins, this will be his last at bat. Here's George Brett and a standing ovation once again. Pay attention, please. See, now pitching for the Rangers. Come out and Tom. here he comes. Hankey now pitching for the Rangers. Kind of poor timing, really. The video was George Brett's last at bat because it sort of stood him up, although half these people were, now they're all cheering for Brett. In fact, the Rangers off the dugout bench. Well, one ball and one strike. It's almost certainly the last at bat Already extra inning. In a spectacular career against the team, he hit his first home run off. Oh, he grooved him one, and he just fouled it out of play. That was, <laughs> that's the pitch you're supposed to hit, George. In this stadium that Brett hit a homer off Fergie Jenkins. It was in this stadium that Brett had his 30-game hitting streak stop. One and two. Chopper to the shortstop. Well for a base hit. George Brett has finished with a base hit. How about a runner for him, Brett? At the sure bat. Here's Hamlin. You know, you can bet one thing. George was probably asked before the game if, he, if this situation, if he wanted to come out for a runner. And that's not the way George plays the game, though. When you really think about it, that's true. This is the way George Brett should go out after a base hit, running the bases. Well, he ought to then go out and play defense in the bottom of the ninth, too. <laughs> he hadn't done that for a while. Two oh, balls and no strikes. There's a thought. Dreyer pitched well. Eight innings. Six hits. They keep saying five hits on the speaker, but six. And he pitched well, but he gave up the two-run homer to Gag. Three balls, no strikes. Now, Brett um, stole a base yesterday. I don't think he'd, nah, he wouldn't want to end his career getting thrown out at second. Never know. 
<laughs> Not on this pitch. Three and zero. Take foul back to the uh, stands. Three balls and a strike. High fly, foul territory. Houston toward the stands and no room. Won't be any room in the new park there either. <laughs> no, everybody's going to be close. Sight lines are going to be great and there will be more people between the foul lines. A lot smaller terrace or bleacher area. Jeff Granger. That oh, was yeah. Jeff Granger yeah, he's down there. Off the bench. That's right. Jeff's uh, former Aggie baseball star, of course, quarterback. Three balls and two strikes to Hamlin. Got it. Oh, Hamlin says, come on. And he may have a proper complaint. Gary Gaetti. Hey, Craig. A lot of movement. Well, it was in the glove. Uh, the only thing you can tell there is that you needed a, a camera shot from the sky looking straight down. Because certainly he didn't move to the time it got to the glove. Here's Gaetti. Gaetti has a base hit in three at-bats. Foul ball. Again, in the Rangers' ninth, Strange, Palmero, Gonzalez, and Franco. The right people are coming up uh, to get a run, if it's possible. Now, if none of these people and none of those people get a hit, guess who has the last hit in Arlington Stadium? You just saw him. He's down at first base. George Brett. Wouldn't that be something? He had his first home run here, and he would get his last hit. Great. They waited an hour and 16 minutes in the bottom of the ninth before they called the Mets-Florida game with the score 9-2. And Once again, the integrity of the game cannot be questioned. An exclamation point <laughs> to the end of the Mets season. It ends as the water builds in Florida. The only thing worse is when they leave oh, Miami, some of them mistakes them for tourists. Gaetti hits one up and over. Now the Rangers are in big trouble. As far as winning this ball game, and Brett will come around and score. And Gary Gaetti now has the final home run in the ballpark so far. Brett getting an ovation as he touches home plate for the last time. So doesn't have the last hit in the ballpark anymore. Last hit, last homer. That was a pretty bad pitch. That was yeah. up in his shoulders. But, you know, this is the role Hanky's not done well in. He's done well in closer situations, but as we've seen before, when he comes in the games where the game literally isn't on the line, Hanky, like a lot of relievers, don't, a lot of closers don't do well in this situation. Remember, that's the situation Jeff Russell always used to have such trouble in. One ball and one strike. Two balls and a strike. Again, don't forget, the ball game, you always want the ball club to, to close on a winning note, uh, but the significance of the game isn't who wins and loses today. Rangers locked into second place. The Royals locked into third place. It's the fact that this is it. Strange with a backhand. The flip from his knees. Oh, yeah. Again, showing the kind of play that Doug Strange has been noted for this year. How about that? Kevin McReynolds up now, two for three. He has been the man that really has caused the problems because uh, he was the one man that Dreyer had no luck with the entire game. He hit the ball hard three times. The last time, his uh, double with one out 
put him in scoring position. Gagne then hits a home run to put the Royals on top. Royals have uh, shown some long ball in this series. I think as we pointed out earlier, it's on the road where they hit home runs. Their ballpark is not conducive to home runs. They had hit, I believe the figure was 22 more home runs uh, on the road than at home, and now that's up to 24. Some of you may be having some funny views on your screen. We're having some sunspots that are causing some satellite transmission. Those will pass, but they are causing some problems for some of you. The, Roy the Royals count now is 75 home runs on the road and 50 at home. That's, that's really an wow. amazing difference. That shows the ballpark. That is directly the ballpark. Bouncing ball, Lee at shortstop. That's him, and that retires the side. In the inning, however, two more runs on another two-run homer. There were two hits, no errors, nobody left. Rangers coming up for the last time in Arlington Stadium, trailing by three. Strange, Balmero, and Gonzalez, and we'll be back. A decade of sports, ten years of entertainment, HSE. How would you like to mingle with golf pros at tour events or talk candidly with them in the locker room and get the story behind the story? Hello, I'm Tom Kite, and I'd like to tell you about a magazine that takes you where the news is breaking. Golf World, the number one news magazine in golf. Golf World brings you in-depth coverage of all major tournaments more than 40 times a year, weekly during peak season. Coverage that starts months in advance of the Masters and continues right on through to the PGA Championship follow-up. You'll also get a close-up look at the tour players who are having a breakthrough year. Golf World will take you inside their game and explore the secrets of their success. Order your one-year subscription to Golf World today. You won't find it on the newsstand. Get more than 40 news-breaking issues for just $23.77, 40% off the regular subscription price. Order now and get 10 swings from the tour free with your paid subscription. Call 800-423-2121. That's 800-423-2121. Golf World, the number one news magazine in golf. Here's our Sherwin-Williams play of the games by Sherwin-Williams. George Brett in his final at bat. Fastball that kind of rode away, and he got it past Penny Lee up the middle for a base hit. And that was our Sherwin-Williams play of the game. Manny sometimes has more range than that, but, you know, that was our Sherwin-Williams play of the game. George Brett with the final hit of his great career. Rangers that will face a new pitcher, not maybe good news, although Apier was pretty strong, and Jeff Montgomery did pitch yesterday. Maybe that'll help. Montgomery is the ace. There's his number, 7 and 5, 2, 2, 9, 44 saves, the big story, best in the American League. Good strikeout to walk ratio. Jeff Montgomery. Who was the last batter struck out by Nolan Ryan? How about Kirby Puckett? That was his last batter struck out in this ballpark. Kirby Puckett. Last batter that Nolan Ryan struck out in Arlington Stadium was Kirby Puckett. Here's Doug Strange now. That, of course, note brought to you by the folks at Advil. There is a strike. Royals four, Rangers one. Jeff Montgomery got the save yesterday. That ball is dropping into center field. McRae coming over, and he's got plenty of room, and there's one out. Norm has left us. He is headed toward the ballpark in Arlington. Never again will Norm Hitzkiss broadcast from Arlington Stadium. First baseman, Palmero. Here's Palmero, and the fans hope against hope that he isn't seeing his last at bat in a Ranger uniform. Palmero is 0 for 3. And he fouls it. He's uh, sort of like George Brett running on a string in this series and not getting any hits. Rafi was uh, 0 for 5 yesterday and 1 for 3 in the uh, first game. So just one hit in the series. That is a ball. Jeff Montgomery, the relief ace, uh, started his career with Cincinnati and found his big success with the Kansas City Royals. Ball is chopped foul. 
Time to announce our uh, grand prize winner in the Desinex Itch and the Steel contest. The lucky winner spends a weekend at spring training with the Rangers, including round-trip airfare, lodging, and tickets to a game. The grand prize winner is Janet Larson of Fort Worth. Congratulations, Janet, and thank you, Desinex and Albertsons, who conducted the contest for us. Desinex Itching to Steel grand prize winner, Janet Larson. She gets to go to spring training a whole weekend next spring. Also tickets to a game. And Palmero strikes out. Start of the day at 297. He is, uh, we're guessing, at about 295. Somewhere in that neighborhood, his final average. And now Juan Gonzalez, who has struck out three times today, but also clinched the American League Home Run Championship when Ken Griffey Jr. did not hit one in the Seattle finale. But again, if he hits one more, he's got a chance to be the Major League home run champ by himself. But he doesn't. Instead, goodbye Arlington Stadium. It's over. For the record, the final out, a ground ball by Juan Gonzalez to shortstop Gagney. Gagney uh, standing right next to Gary Gaetti, who hit the last home run in this ballpark. And there will be a ceremony. We're staying right here. In fact, already uh, the uh, Rangers are sort of congratulating each other. Introduction to all time team. Rafael Palmeiro's moved out to first base, and he's picking up first base. He is taking first base back to the dugout, apparently just in case. Just in case. That's been his base here at Arlington Stadium. Of course, it's got the special insignia on it here, and I think he wants that as a souvenir. This was a quick game, two hours and 16 minutes, and we'll be back to recap this one and get the ceremonies underway in just a moment. Twenty years ago, when people wanted to send us a letter, all they had to do was write Coors, Golden, Colorado on the envelope. That'll still work today. So if you want to drop us a line about beer or baseball or whatever, it'll get here. Honest. Every season is more of a physical challenge, but after 26 years in the majors, I've learned to take care of myself. Like now, when my muscles are sore, I take Advil. Just a couple of Advil, and I'm ready to go another nine innings. To last as long as I have, you got to stick with what works. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Get thirsty. And when you're thirsty, you better have your Gatorade. It goes down easy, quenches to the core. Quenches your deep down body thirst 30% faster than water. Frequent flyers on most airlines are thousands of miles from a free trip. But on Southwest Airlines, our company club frequent flyer members are only eight short round trips away. Southwest Airlines Company Club, the shortest route to free trips. Southwest Airlines has so many flights, if you miss one, you can always catch the next one. Or the next one. Or the next one. Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. A decade of sports, 10 years of entertainment. Jesse. Texas Ranger Baseball on HSE is brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade for that deep down body thirst. By your local Sherwin Williams paint store, the pros know as Sherwin Williams, a participating sponsor of Major League Baseball. By Coors Light, the silver bullet is the right beer now. 
and by Southwest Airlines, offering frequent flights and low everyday fares, which is why flying Southwest Airlines is just plain smart. As you can see, most of the crowd has stayed for the ceremony. The digging up of home plate has already been loosened, we might add, and uh, the transfer of it to the other ballpark. This is the final, final summary from Arlington Stadium with Kansas City winning at 4-1. Four, four runs, seven hits, no errors, three left. Texas, one runs, four hits, no errors. They left three. Apier got the final victory in this ball yard, 18-8. Montgomery, a 45th save. He leads the league in that category. Dreyer, the losing pitcher, 3-3. Three and three. And the final two home runs not hit by the Rangers, hit by Gagne and Gaetti. Gaetti with the final home run in the ball yard as the Rangers go down to defeat and finish the season 86-76, and 76, but they finish in second place. The Royals finish third in the West. And this also, of course, would be the last of American League West as we now know it with the realignment uh, and the redivisional chafing next week, or next year, we should say. Of course, uh, Southwest Airlines all season has saluted the great Nolan Ryan, and this is final season. Again, a proud salute to Nolan Ryan for his legendary place in baseball history. These were the lasts, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. The last out, Juan Gonzalez. The last pitch, Jeff Montgomery. The last hit, Gary Gaetti. And that also was the last home run. The last stolen base by David Hulse. The last wave was in the bottom of the sixth. And the last nacho by, he's been buying him for 22 years, Norm Hitzkiss. Remember, Southwest Airlines. We don't know whether or not uh, you will be a genius by knowing those lasts, but you will be just plain smart. The uh, cars are coming in, and they will be taking members of the Rangers all-time team. They're going to be announcing the uh, all-time team very shortly. There are four police motorcycles uh, out on the field, uh, a 72 convertible plus a second convertible that came out through gate four, then some others came uh, out over the side. Of course, they don't have to worry about the condition of the field any longer. Uh, what is going to happen now with the police escort to stop behind home plate? The all-time team will be announced, and you have seen that listed uh, in the newspapers. A number of the members of the all-time team are members of the present Ranger team. They will be coming from such locations as the center field gate, the visitors' dugout, and also the home team dugout, and the right field and left field, uh, the right field corner, I should say, the uh, three locations. And uh, we'll be seeing them come out very shortly as soon as all of the uh, cars are in position and this uh, ceremony here actually gets underway. I think the thing that is most striking at this point is that very few of the fans have left. This is a, a ballpark that uh, the fans have great memories for, even though it never had a championship, never had an all-star game but it was the first home of Major League Baseball in North Texas and the first site of American League Baseball in the state of Texas. And we have a large number of folks that are in our crew that uh, grew up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and were here for the very first game and many of the highlights that have been celebrated on videotape and audio tape over the first 22 years of the Texas Rangers. And I guess as Jennifer Briggs put it, it will never be the same, but it will be something even bigger and better in the new ballpark. Nolan Ryan being interviewed uh, in the dugout. He will be introduced as one of the members of the all-time team, of course. Many of these names. Most of them will be here. There are three that we understand will not be here. A couple for obvious reasons. Buddy Bell will not be here. Nor will Ruben Sierra, who of course is still an active player with the Oakland Athletics. He cannot be here, nor Charlie Huff who is, of course, with the Florida Marlins. But all the rest of them are scheduled to be here and be honored by the fans. And they will all make their way to the new uh, the ballpark, the ballpark in Arlington, where we will pick up Norm Hitchcock a little bit gentlemen, later on. Now, this final day here Arlington is the Stadium. ceremony on the, the field with Chuck Morris. Fans rash fans to, rash to vote for the players they players most associated, associated as an all-time all team, team for the Texas, the Texas Rangers, Rangers here at Arlington here Stadium. At Arlington Stadium. Stadium. And now, the introduction of that team. There goes Espy, the pitch swung on, and a high drive, deep right, down the line, might be fair, might be gone. It is goodbye, a two-run home run to Rafael Palmeiro. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the first baseman, two-time All-Star, Rafael Palmero. The first baseman, number 25, Rafael Palmero. The 2-2 to Franco on a swing and a drive, deep right field. Salmon going back, away back. He's at the wall looking up. Goodbye, Grand Slam! Julio Franco has just hit a Grand Slam to right. The right. Ladies and gentlemen, the only batting champion in Texas Rangers history, number 14, Julio Franco, the all-time Rangers second baseman. can bet that there are this is Buddy Bell he will not be here as we understand it but he will be the announcer the all-time ladies third and gentlemen the all-time Rangers third baseman unable to be with us today due to illness Buddy Bell. number 25 you know, when you Buddy Franco Bell and Palmero go out there you have to wonder how many fans both watching on television and at home are wondering if they'll be back the Here's the shortstop. Blue Pinello goes back, leaps, can't hold it as he hits the wall, lays stunned on the ground. One run scores while Harris scores two for an inside. Department. Ladies and gentlemen, the Rangers all-time shortstop. Ranger all-star number 11, Toby Hara. That is his 1974 uniform. Ladies and gentlemen, the Rangers all-time left fielder, number 19, two-time American League home run champion, Juan Gonzalez. to the center fielder, one of the most popular Rangers of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, an Arlington Stadium favorite, the all-time center fielder, number 17, Mickey Rivers. Unable to be with us today, still a player with the Oakland Athletics, Ruben Sierra. Even when honored, he received some booze. But at least he doesn't hear them. Pitch the sunny line. Now behind the plate, a tie, two catchers. Ladies and gentlemen, one of our all-time catchers, number 10, Tim, Tim Sonberg. Sonny, of course, now has uh, rights to tell Pudge we'll see you later. a thing or two, because they're going to share this position. Here's the other catcher. Wow. And the 2-1 pitch. Line drive, right field, a base hit. Gonzalez scores. Here comes Bouchelle. The throw is not in time. And Budge Rodriguez has 
capped off quite a day. Ladies and gentlemen, a tie at all-time catcher, number seven, Pudge Rodriguez. will soon be 
getting into the vehicles. But first, let's go to home plate. Tom Vandergriff, former mayor, and now judge. Tom Vandergriff will lift up home plate. He had a little help earlier. And he is going to move home plate on the satin pillow to the new ballpark, the ballpark in Arlington. On Rangers Diamond Vision, the all-time team will also... The all-time team is going to uh, go over as well. We will keep you appraised of the parade, and once we get over to the... Uh, the ballpark at Arlington. Norm Hitzkus will be there and we'll be bringing in Norm and he'll be able to describe the scene from that end. Here's Judge Vandergriff and he will escort home plate. Meanwhile, the all-time uh, Rangers are jumping in the cars and they'll be going into the procession. Large number of media behind. And by the way, the fans here, I don't know if the announcement's been made, but they should stay in the ballpark because they will have pictures on the Diamond Vision that we'll be supplying from the other locations. Already our feed is up on the Diamond Vision screen as we wait for the cars to actually pull out. motion down the first base side because uh, Nolan Ryan is in one of the lead cars and now the police escort pulls out and home plate will go out through the center field gate to the new ballpark in the second car we see Tom Schieffer and George Bush and they're in the yellow car that will be pulling in behind as the car goes out through the center field gate with home plate Authenticity, all these sirens and flashers going, make it sound uh, <laughs> even more impressive. People in this area remember this, of course, originally as Turnpike Stadium, the first ball game played here, the Dallas Fort Worth Club of the uh, minor leagues. They played for a crowd of about 7,000. It has had many additions. It has really outgrown itself years ago. Now Arlington Stadium has finished its history. You can see the water in the outfield is uh, it is still wet. A couple members of the all-time team. Look at the water. at the center field gate and home plate will have left the uh, ball yard and the players to follow George Bush Tom Schieffer on the left the managing general partner and the president has now started to actually leave the actual grounds. The judge has actually exited, and there he is pulling out of the center field area at Arlington Stadium, and this shot is coming to you from the other direction. We're at the uh, ballpark in Arlington, the new stadium. the fans have started to exit here but uh, they will have an opportunity those that stay to see what you are seeing now eventually these shots will be put up on the screen here right now they're playing a video that was put together as you see the procession now outside gates two and three leaving the park now this park uh, Arlington Stadium will not be demolished in exactly uh, 
breakneck speed. It will take some time, and it will still be uh, there. Will still be a great deal of it still evident next spring. Again, those that are in the ballpark will be able to see the activity from the ballpark in Arlington as cameras are located there. Here's what some of the players of the past thought about this ballpark. Well, I would say probably, uh, you know, hitting the three home runs in one game uh, to make me one of only a few guys that ever did it in both leagues. Uh, had one week here where I hit three grand slams in one week to tie a record. So, I, you know, those are probably some things that stick out in my mind. Well, I just remember playing with a lot of great ball players. I think I hit the first inside the park home run here. Uh, I'll never forget that moment. Al Bumbry was playing in center field, and uh, it wasn't over his head. It was a ball that he had to come in for and bounced over his head, so I had the opportunity, the luxury of uh, going all the way around the, bla the, around the bases. But uh, uh, I just remember a lot, of, a lot of great games here. This is also the game where, uh, where we turned the first and only, if I'm not mistaken, triple play in Texas Ranger uh, history. Toby Hara, to me, to my car growth. So a lot of good memories uh, in my career here. Well, for me, the, the biggest is big Frank, Frank Howard hitting the home run, hitting the first home run in this ballpark. And uh, that stands out as much as anything. Of course, the cowboy hats and the fans were all excited. And, and this ballpark even, uh, I, I love this old ballpark. It's got a lot of great, uh, great memories in it. We were playing against the Yankees game of the week. And um, I, I happened to make some pretty good catches out in the outfield and threw out a couple of base runners. Then all of a sudden, the fans start giving me the standing ovation out there. And, of course, I reciprocated by tipping my cap. And ever since then, for those four years I spent here, it was Al's pals that they start calling out in left field. Well, probably two things. Uh, one, the fans. Th this park is situated like Fenway, where the fans have a very close proximity to the players and their part of the game. That's one thing we're going to lose with the new ballpark this park has. The other thing is the Mickey River stories. You know, I mean, the Mickey River stories are great. Remember one day in center field, 100 degrees, wind was blowing hard, lost a fly ball, dropped it after the game. Galloway says, uh, what happened to center field, Mickey? And Mickey says, man, I couldn't catch that ball. The wind was blowing 100 degrees. Only Jim Kern can tell stories like that. Again, those of you in the ballpark, uh, this procession will continue into the new ballpark. And we will actually have on the big screen all of the ceremony that is going on with the planting of the home plate. So if you want to stick around the ballpark, please do. Meanwhile, uh, we continue to watch the ballpark. And inside the ballpark in Arlington is Norm Hitchkiss with Mayor Green. Thank you, Greg Lucas. We're here at the ballpark in Arlington. Let's show you some shots of this place before we bring in the mayor of Arlington, Richard Green. Jock, if you would, shoot straight out in the center field. This is home plate. The camera's right behind home plate, looking straight out in the center field. The dirt portion out there will be Vandergrift Plaza. Right out there is where the statue of the mayor of Arlington, Tom Grand Vandergrift, will be erected. And later on, as Ranger greats have statues put out there, they'll be put in that picnic and grassy area right out in dead center field. Above that, you see some glassed areas. Those will be Ranger offices and space to be leased. As we pan across toward left field, and you pan across the offices that'll be out there, that big open space will be the club out over the left field wall of the ballpark in Arlington, and we are joined in the ballpark in Arlington by the mayor of Arlington, Richard Green. It's nice to have you here, and this must be a thrilling day for you. Oh, it's a day long wished for, and the reality of it is almost unbelievable. This is a process that will culminate on the 1st of April next year with an exhibition game against the Mets and then a season home opener here April 11th. But this thing began a ways back. Sure did, Norm. We had our first uh, serious conversation about the need for a new ballpark with Eddie Childs in 1988. So we're, uh, you know, we're getting down to where it's been a number of years since we first started working on it. But it's close to being a reality, and that day is not far ahead now. Mayor Green, it was not always certain this ballpark would be in Arlington. Were there some anxious moments for you? Oh, indeed there were, because of the fact that the uh, initial reaction when you start talking about doing something like this is, is Arlington big enough? Can Arlington handle it? Is there enough population? Is there enough resources in Arlington to do this, or do we need to move to a bigger city? <laughs> so the uh, first uh, part of the challenge was to make sure that uh, we nail down the answer to that question early and firmly, and that's what we did. And uh, today, we're seeing the result of that. 
imagine if you had questions about Arlington, be, Arlington being big enough, populous enough, rich enough. Imagine the questions Tom Vandergriff must have had in the late 60s when he may have been the lone voice pushing for baseball in this area. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, Tom's uh, dream and uh, his uh, vision for the future is certainly what set uh, all this into motion, and that perhaps was even... Uh, more unbelievable and more challenging in the mid-60s than uh, what we're talking about today. But that set it into motion, and now we're going to see the greatest ballpark in the world open up here next spring, and then I think for the next 50 to 100 years, this will be the reference point in this sport. You know, Mayor Green, it's, it's still a little hard, even with this stadium about 70% complete, to, to truly imagine what a palace this is going to be for baseball, but even project... 10, 15, 20 years down down the road when Mayor Vandergriff's statue is in center field along with those of Nolan Ryan and Juan Gonzalez and others. What a historic park this might be. No doubt about it. By that time, at least three, four World Series championships will have been won here. And uh, so that will all make part of the national and worldwide reputation that I'm sure is going to make this ballpark a reference point, like I say, uh, in this sport, uh, not only throughout the country, but throughout the world. And I think that the facility together with the game and those meaningful events that will occur in the future is what it's going to mean. Just like that Yankee Stadium is the house that Ruth built, and I think you're going to find those kinds of references 10, 15, 20 years from now about this facility. Were you pleased that the club decided that the name of Arlington had to be part of the name of the ballpark? No doubt about it. The people of Arlington who showed the kind of confidence and faith and were willing to make the commitment uh, to approve an increase in the sales tax are the ones who deserve the recognition for what uh, they uh, are doing uh, and what they have done in the past. And uh, so Arlington uh, being an essential part of the name, guaranteeing us the kind of national exposure and media attention uh, that uh, is probably the only way that Arlington will ever be known as well as other cities of 270, 300,000 people in the country are known. And so this will ensure that. And uh, we're extremely pleased about Arlington's position uh, in the identity. Following this ceremony today, though, there's still a bunch of work to be done before the start of next season. No doubt about it. The field is not in ideal condition <laughs> today, and the fact that there's still probably a good uh, four to six feet of uh, fill to be done after they get through with all this subsurface work. But uh, as that uh, takes place and as the seats get put in and all the finished work that gets done every day now, it's kind of like building a house and knowing... Uh, that the finishing touches that are taking place are what's going to make it home, and that's is what's now going on here. And as that work uh, continues, uh, each week that passes makes it all that more exciting. In fact, uh, Jock, if you would pan a little bit to the left here, the mayor and I were speculating that if we were coming to bat in this ballpark right now, we'd bunt because right. there's a tough third baseline to feel the bunt on. That's right. If we could get this right down the line, we would... We probably could have an inside the park home run on a bunt. Has that ever happened, Norm? <laughs> I don't think so, but I tell you what, that, that's a tough field right now to that's play right. on. That's right, that's it, <laughs> indeed. We appreciate your being here very, very much. I know that this is a thrilling day for Arlington and the, and the city council and the people who live in the city. Indeed it is. We've got the city council, sports authority, other city officials here, family members over uh, uh, seated in the seating area, not in any seats yet, but... Uh, watching on today so uh, now that the plate is almost here we're about ready for the event and uh, we're looking forward to it and yeah, somewhere the caravan is about arriving at the city and we're getting ready for home plate to be transported from its old home at arlington stadium to the ballpark in arlington which should happen just moments from now the rangers all-time team also on the way here to the ballpark in arlington for the ceremonies that will officially plant home plate here this park is uh, a about to 70 to 75 percent complete. It will cost about 165 million dollars. The playing surface is 22 feet below street level and it should seat approximately 48,100 when it opens next year. There are about 840,000 Ranger red bricks in the facade. Uh, the sunset granite on the lower arches they have moved 78,000 truckloads of dirt, poured 60,000 cubic feet of concrete, installed 4,800 tons of steel, and bought, Mayor Green will be happy about this, 40,000 gallons of green paint. <laughs> there will be raised bullpens, so you, the fans can literally sit out sure. by the bullpens in, sure. in right and left field. Yes, indeed. This is going to be 
uh, the home bullpen over here and then the visiting bullpen over here. It's a little more in the sun. I'm, I, I'm not sure that uh, that's a complete accident that it happened that way, but uh, uh, the home uh, pitchers will be warming up right there in front of home run porch and then the visitors will be right over here at the, at, at the left side of uh, the office facility. So we'll be able to see all the action, everything that's happening. There will be approximately 127 suites, 49 lower level suites here at uh, the ballpark in Arlington and 78 upper level suites. They will have open air balconies, a wet bar, there'll be three TV monitors in every suite, a refrigerator in there. In right field, there will be a, a very much, I think, that will become a feature of this park, a porch in right field, somewhat like the overhang in Tiger Stadium in Detroit. There'll be a sports grill out there, and there'll be 75 fixed concession stands. And heading out onto the field here at the ballpark in Arlington, members of the club's all-time team, Fergie Jenkins and Toby Hera here. Uh, behind me, Jim Sunberg is moving in. Rafael Palmero, Pudge Rodriguez, Gaylord Perry. Nolan Ryan following Julio Franco, who's still got a batting helmet on. That's the sign of a hitter when he wears his batting helmet to ceremonies. Uh, Mickey Rivers, Kevin Brown, and Larry Parrish. Soon they'll be followed, and here comes home plate with uh, Mayor Tom Vandergriff. The home plate being transported by the former mayor of Arlington, Tom Vandergrift, to the new ballpark in Arlington. passing the torch, but passing the plate now. How about Here we go. <laughs> we'll set this in its permanent home for the next hundred years. <laughs> oh, that's Here we go. That's good. <laughs> Uh, former Mayor Vandergriff, if you would come by for a moment. I can't imagine of all the people at the stadium today, you must not have perhaps the most emotion of them all. I do, Norm. I, I truly do. I'm so excited about this new stadium. It's uh, nothing more than the people of this region deserve, as far as that's concerned, the world's best baseball park. But on the other hand, there are so many wonderful memories across the way. Uh, that stadium meant so much. We worked so hard, so long, to get Major League Baseball here and uh, to finally succeed in a goal that was shared by the entire region. First time we'd ever worked together, Dallas, Fort Worth, all the region. It, uh, it meant more than baseball, really. It showed us the way to cooperation on matters like airports, uh, for example. So I think back to all that and uh, the fact that it was a momentous event, the old stadium, so many memories, family, friends, great players, great thrills. Uh, it, uh, it's hard to part with it. I, I dread driving away from it tonight, <laughs> to be honest about it. <laughs> Mayor, while this was a cooperative effort for these two, uh, this area to bring baseball here, there were times in the late 60s, the cooperative effort was one person, yourself out there banging away, trying to talk somebody into moving a baseball team here. Well, I couldn't blame a lot of folks for giving up hope. We were so near so many times, it seemed like that fate just wasn't on our side. But uh, it finally happened, and the least I could do was be to keep working for it. People had enough faith, uh, kept uh, stepping up to the plate, so to speak, and uh, voting more monies for expansion of the stadium to give us a little better foothold. Uh, so, uh, uh, as I said, uh, uh, they, they deserve my best, and uh, uh, I tried to give it to them. Mayor, I don't know how much you'll live in this life, 20 years or another 100 years, but after you're gone, there's going to be a statue of you in center field looking down on this park. Well, maybe then I'll not miss a game. Uh, I, I dread missing them now, uh, but uh, at that point in time, perhaps I'll be here for every Ranger victory. Congratulations, right. and Thank the emotion is all over your face. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right. That is Tom Vandergriff, the former mayor of Arlington, the man who almost single-handedly fought the fight for baseball to be brought to this area and we now have the culmination of the moving of the team here and the new stadium in Arlington will open next spring um, April 1st an exhibition game against the New York Mets and then the season opener April 11th next year we're joined now by the managing general partner of the Texas Rangers George Bush um, kind of a day is it for you 
Well, it's a day of joy because I know our fans are fixing to uh, get to watch Ranger baseball in the greatest ballpark ever built. And so uh, for some, it's a sad moment. I know my memories in the old ballpark will remain with me forever. But I know uh, what the fans are fixing to see six months from now, and that is baseball played, good baseball played in a fabulous uh, place to watch the game. This is only about 70% finished. I, I wonder if, if you're anxious to show people what kind of an unbelievable place those of you who've gone through all the planning know it will be. Yeah, we're gonna. We, as you know, the Fourth of July, we show the folks, and we'll probably do the same thing over Christmas vacation. When when people who uh, work every day have a chance to uh, take some time off, we would hope they'd come and visit this place of uh, this cathedral for baseball, mm -hmm. and they'll see what I'm talking about. It is uh, uh, right on top of the field. The accommodations for the fans are going to be fabulous. There will be a lot of odd angles, so we'll have some unusual plays. So broadcasters, excitable broadcasters <laughs> such as yourself, will be able to <laughs> wax eloquently. Uh, but this is great, and I and uh, I mean, even you, a man who's been to a lot of places, got to feel a little bit of a tingle of excitement being inside this uh, fabulous uh, ballpark. I was last year about a month ago, month, month and a half ago. It is incredibly amount of progress made since then. It, right now, you can walk in here and you can honestly see the makings of a spectacular ball. You bet. You can feel opening day, and yeah. uh, I really look forward to that. And uh, Somebody asked me what the great memory was. Uh, uh, for me, of course, is when Rusty Rose and I were introduced to the Arlington fans as the new uh, general partners of the new ownership group, and, uh, uh, and of course, Nolan's 5,000 strikeout, but nothing is going to uh, equal opening this new ballpark next year. Hey, congratulations. It's thank been a, a wonderful effort to put it together. We look forward to next spring. Good, Norm. Thank, thank you. you, George, very much. If you would, on your way back, ask Nolan to stop by, if you could, please. Thank you. Um, George Bush, the managing general partner of the Texas Rangers, uh, running for governor next year, and we're joined by a man spending his last year in his season uniform. It is Nolan Ryan, last day in the major leagues. Your thoughts? Well, it's uh, it's been a special day, and it's been good to uh, see the fans turn out for this weekend because it was a special weekend, and uh, with the um, carnival around the ballpark, and then coming over to the new ballpark, so it's a uh, it's a uh, a new era that we're going into, and uh, I think it's a real exciting time here in Arlington. No, and I've never known you to look back and play what if, but I wonder if there's just a touch of disappointment that you weren't able to pitch today. Well, there's a, a lot of disappointment over the whole season, and that's just one of the things. I would have liked to have pitched today and, and uh, had the opportunity to pitch last game here, and, and uh, but it just didn't work out that way, and you never are able to predict um, what will happen. So you just have to accept what happens and, and do your best and uh, go on from there. Well, the arm held out 27 years, didn't it? Well, you know, <laughs> I would have liked it to hold out another 10 days, but it didn't work out that way, but I, I can't complain. Tell me about the meeting at home plate with George Brett. Well, that was special. Uh, you know, uh, that's one of the few times I can honestly say that uh, I enjoyed seeing George in uniform because he was always the, one of the toughest outs I ever had to face, and he was such a competitor. And uh, I thought it was a real special day for him, and I'm real pleased that he got that hit and went out with a hit. And, uh, you know, George is a real special ball player in person, and so it was neat. I don't know how much you and George's paths will cross, but I have a feeling five years from now they'll cross someplace in uh, central New York. Well, I'd love it if it worked out that way, and uh, uh, I don't think there's uh, any doubt that, uh, that George is going to be uh, inducted, and I hope that works out for me, too. Nolan, for the five years that you've given us a lot of special attention and some marvelous thrills, thank you for that, and thank you for a fantastic career. The, the baseball fans in this area, I think, truly are thrilled that they got to see five years of it. Well, thank you, Norm. It surpassed any expectations I had. I came up here thinking I was going to play one year, and, um, you know, it was five unbelievable years, uh, and I enjoyed each and every one of them and um, wouldn't trade it for anything. We appreciate your time, Nolan. Thank you. Thank you. That is uh, right-hander Nolan Ryan, his last day in a major league uniform today. From a fairly emotional um, transfer of home plate ceremony in the ballpark in Arlington, where uh, exhibition opener April 1st of next year and the regular season opener is April 11th, let's take it back to Greg Lucas in the old ballpark in Arlington. Thank you much, Norman. Of course, I want to thank all of the folks with HSE that made it possible for us to get the pictures on both sides uh, of the scene here in the Arlington area, both parks, the new and the old. We'll be back after we take a break to recap the season and some final thoughts in just a moment. A decade of sports, 10 years of entertainment, HSE.
The secret power of Tai Chi. It's the ancient Chinese fitness program that began 2,500 years ago. Now, learn how to reduce stress and boost your vitality with David Carradine's Tai Chi workout video. Hello, I am David Carradine, and for 23 years I have studied Tai Chi to help achieve total harmony of mind, body, and spirit. Let David Carradine show you the benefits of Tai Chi and improve strength and endurance, greater energy and vitality, improve flexibility and muscle tone, plus much more. For me, Tai Chi is a great stress reducer and it really helps me to relax. Best of all, David Carradine's Tai Chi workout is perfect for men or women, young or old, no matter what shape you're in. Let me be your personal trainer to help you unlock the secret power of Tai Chi. David Carradine's Tai Chi Workout on VHS is only $19.95 and not available in stores. Call now to order. This is the Rangers Post Game Report. A recap of today's game with stats, highlights, and scores from around the leagues. Today's show is being brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Nothing quenches that deep down body thirst faster than Gatorade. Back to Arlington Stadium for a wrap-up of today's game. Guests who have appeared on Ranger programs uh, receive AM-FM stereo cassette player from RCA. You can see the security around uh, Arlington Stadium, but we got to say that none of it has been needed. The uh, fans here in uh, Texas, uh, let's say they don't go in for that sort of thing. Uh, the uh, ballpark has been untouched. The pitcher's rubber has been removed by officials and also of course home plate as you saw transferred uh, memories and uh, some folks that want souvenirs will have an opportunity to uh, get involved in some auctions some of the seats and so on and so forth meanwhile standing over where they will have a new pitcher's rubber uh, before next spring uh, Norm hits get some final thoughts on the, this 1993 season Norm all in all I think you have to consider this a really good season for the Rangers uh, Greg it did not end with a pennant but given all the injuries during the season given the continuing juggling of the lineup I think it's also conceivably it could have ended on a far far more sour note the club finishes 10 games above 500 is in second place by itself for the first time since 1986 I think has has high hopes for next season get some of the people well the pitching staff really developed some very very sturdy arms this year with with three guys who seem to form the heart of next year's rotation. As far as the ballpark closing, Greg, I, I sat down um, before coming to the park today and tried to figure out, I, I was in my 20s when I came to opening night of <laughs> the first ballpark in Arlington back in April of 1972 and, and have lived and covered the Rangers for more than 20 years. And there's just a touch of sadness that that old yard that served the Rangers so well is disappearing. But, Greg, this is going to be a special place. Uh, it sometimes is a little hard to imagine when you look around at just concrete and steel girders and just the supports for stands in this new park. But I think the people that come here next year are going to be amazed. This, I believe, from having seen the artist sketch and been in here over the summer several times, is an awesome yard. Next time we look at it, it will be full of people. Yes, it will. And, Greg... That broadcast booth looks great up there. <laughs> We're looking forward to it next April. Thanks a lot, Norm. Great working with you again this year. We'll see you in April. See you in April, Greg. That about does it here. The final score, of course, the Rangers win it 4-1 to one as uh, they defeat the, uh, or they lose, rather, 4-1 to one as Kansas City knocks them off uh, by that score. And because of that, the star of the game was the old ballpark itself. Arlington Stadium, 22 years, lots of memories. The Texaco star of the game one last time. We'll be back with uh, some final thoughts and more in just a moment. On Southwest Airlines, friends fly free for business, too. For example, if Dunn buys a ticket, Bradstreet flies free. Buy one round-trip ticket at Southwest Airlines' regular low, unrestricted fare, and your friend flies with you free. So if Bausch buys a ticket, Lom flies free. Or if Ben buys a ticket, Jerry flies free. Friends fly free for business on Southwest Airlines. Just plain smart. Come on, let's mix it up. Let's mix it up. Let's mix it up. There are lots.
lots of ways to work up a deep down thirst. And with eight flavors, there are lots of Gatorade ways to quench it. Cold War. Retool the arms race. Conflict is certain. Ready. Aim. Fire. The Stars War with the NHL. The Red Wings battle the Stars live Tuesday at 7.30 on HSE. A decade of sports, 10 years of entertainment, HSE. The catch of the game tonight, uh, brought to you by Long John Silvers, where America goes for fish, took place in the final inning of the game, and it was Ranger Doug Strange who made the play. Brent Main, the hitter, as he rips the ball toward the middle, a backhand dive and a throw from the knees. Our catch of the game brought to you by Long John Silvers. There you see the live shot back in the new ballpark, uh, the ballpark in Arlington, as they are taking a group photo with home plate, which will be buried. This was the home plate here uh, for 22 years, or maybe even more, depending on the uh, whether it was in here for the minor league days. But it is now in the ballpark in Arlington. I'll be back to take a look at the scores in baseball, including a check on that uh, National League pennant race. It may be over. We'll tell you when we come back. Every season is more of a physical challenge, but after 26 years in the majors, I've learned to take care of myself. Like now, when my muscles are sore, I take Advil. Just a couple of Advil, and I'm ready to go another nine innings. To last as long as I have, you got to stick with what works. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. The men's warehouse is a fine men's specialty store. And when you walk into a men's warehouse, you're immediately surprised at how nice the store really looks. And we go out of our way to make it a pleasant experience. We are not a place where you can buy a cheap suit cheap. We are a place where you can buy quality designer clothing at a 20 to 30% discount. I guarantee it. The men's warehouse. Call 1-800-776-SUIT. Nobody brings you more blow-by-blow -blow boxing than Prime. Oh, nailed again with it right in the left. We take you ringside across the U.S. Edwards is on Wadley Lane. Six to go down, and he does. He has landed on the table right in front of us. We cover the blockbusters in Europe. That's a better punch. That hurt him. Lost. Bruno got through a punch. That hurt him. He's come out over some trouble there. Knock yourself out with boxing on HSE. Prescription medicines can have dangerous interactions with emergency room drugs. Medic Alert can prevent this. Call 1-800-ID-ALERT today. A check now the scoreboard. First, the National League for the final time this year. Final score, Atlanta beat Colorado 5-3. That might be enough, as we'll show you in a moment. Five runs, 12, it's no errors. Colorado, three runs, six, it's no errors. Glavin got his 22nd win. McMichael his 19th save. And former uh, Brave uh, Need uh, was the losing pitcher, 5-9. and nine. Mejia hit his home run, the home run for Colorado. Justice hit his 40th home run for Atlanta. Elsewhere, it was 3-1, to one, Montreal over Pittsburgh. Boucher winning again for Montreal. He's going to be a national hero up there, at least in Quebec. Wetteland was the uh, man who got the save. He is now 43 in that category and hope the losing pitcher 0-2, no home runs. In the Florida-New York game, five runs in the top of the ninth. And finally, after a rain delay, New York wins it. 9-2, 12 hits in the game for New York. Thompson hit the only home run, his 11. Philadelphia was uh, beaten by St. Louis 2 to nothing at two hits to all that St. Louis got, but that was enough. Guterman was the winning pitcher, 3-3. Three and three. The losing pitcher was Williams, 3-7, and seven, and there were no home runs. Uh, it was 7-4, to four, Cincinnati over Houston. Ayala getting the victory. His record is now 7-10. and 10. Service, his second save. Juden, the losing pitcher, 0-1. Oh Donalds hit a three-run homer. Morris hit a solo homer. One home run for each team. So the Astros wrap up their season losing in Cincinnati. And here's the big one, and this is why we say it may be all but over. The Dodgers have a 6-1 to lead over San Francisco. That is in the sixth inning. And obviously, if uh, that uh, holds and the Dodgers win, the Braves would be the champions 
of the National League. If the Giants come back to win, there would be a playoff tomorrow night, but they are five runs down. One highlight of this game, Mike Piazza of the Dodgers hit his 34th home run, which is a new Dodger record. That's a new Los Angeles Dodger record. And uh, that's the story here. Six to one, the Dodgers are leading the Giants in the sixth. One other game in San Diego in the eighth inning. The Cubs leading four to nothing in that one. Sosa hit his 33rd home run. We'll check out the uh, American League scores, but first let's take a look at uh, the highlight of the day. The end of the career for George Brett finishes on a good note as he takes an outside pitch up the middle. Manuel Lee sort of gets in the vicinity, and it's a base hit for George Brett as he finishes career with a base knock, his only hit of the series. Let's take a look now at the American League scores. George has to be happy. It goes in the books as a hit. Milwaukee 6-3 to three over Boston. McDonald uh, getting the win. He's 2-2. Two and two. Quantrell, the losing pitcher, 6-12. and 12. No home runs in that game. New York wins over Detroit 2-1. to one. Munoz evens his record at 3-3. Three and three. Bolton, the losing pitcher, he's 6-6. Six and six. No home runs listed there. Meanwhile, Baltimore and Toronto. Uh, Toronto gearing up for playoff action with an 11-6 win over Baltimore. Brown getting the win 1-1. One one. McDonald, uh, the losing pitcher, 13-14. There were 45,000 fans again in Baltimore. Carter hit his 32nd home run and also his 33rd home run of the game for Toronto. Chris Hoyle, the catcher, his 29th home run for Baltimore. The long ball story. In Cleveland, they had 72,390 as they close out their old ballpark, at least as far as baseball is concerned. It'll still be the home of the Browns. Beret getting the victory. He's 12-5. and five. Nagy, the losing pitcher, 2-6. and six. No home runs in that one. Seattle and Minnesota, the story here was that Ken Griffey Jr. did not homer in this game. Therefore, Juan Gonzalez wins the home run championship in the American League for the second year in a row. Tappany got the win. He's 12-15. and 15. Lowry, the losing pitcher, 11-9. Puckett did homer, his 22nd, and Herbeck hit his 24th. McCarty homered, and so did uh, Herbeck again. So Herbeck had a two-home run game in the final game of the year. In Oakland, uh, J.T. Snow hit his 16th home run for California, and uh, that game is currently in the seventh, uh, sixth inning, I should say, and it's 6-3. to three. California leads it there. Goodbye, Stadium. Goodbye, George Brett. Goodbye, Nolan Ryan. Hopefully for Ranger fans, not goodbye to Rafael Palmero and fellows that have been very effective like Julio Franco, but off-season discussions will determine that. We'll be back to close out our telecast in just a moment. Because most of our flights are short, this is what our meals look like on Southwest Airlines. It's also what our fares look like. Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. Southwest Airlines has one of the best on-time records in the country. Mr. Smith, you're early. Just something to remember. Southwest Airlines, it's just plain smart. Problems. 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 Solutions, solutions, solutions. Pour gum out fuel system cleaners right in your gas tank, and with just one tank full, you'll get better engine performance, performance, performance. Gum out solutions to engine problems from the people at Pennzoil. Quality gum out products are available at DAPS Discount Auto Parts. Top ranked teams and time honored rivalries find their home in the only conference within the confines of one state, the Southwest Conference, a tradition as big as Texas. It's an SWC doubleheader Monday night on HSE. Gear up with Eli Gold as he travels the NASCAR circuit to bring you the inside look with auto racing's big boys behind the wheels on This Week in NASCAR. Live from Charlotte, Thursday night at 10 on HSE. The transfer of home plate from Arlington Stadium to the ballpark in Arlington. The season is over for the Texas Rangers and uh, most of baseball. There are still a few games that are winding down. But as you see, the plate go into place, and don't worry, they will measure it and make sure it's pointed the right direction when it's time for the season. Let's take a look at the standings in the West. The final standings, the Sherwin-Williams standings, the White Sox will ultimately win by eight, but uh, the Rangers were in it until the last couple of weeks of the season. Kansas City finishes third, Seattle is fourth. Now remember, next year, if uh, everything holds together and the division alignments are as they have been proposed, the Rangers would be in the West, so would Seattle, California, and Oakland. And you can figure out what that means. But that's the story. The Rangers uh, this year finishing in second place in the present Western Division. 
We want to thank all the people who have been with us all year. And, of course, all the many memories in Arlington Stadium, the 11 years that Home Sports Entertainment has been able to bring you baseball from Arlington Stadium. We're looking ahead to next year in this home, the ballpark in Arlington, new home of the Texas Rangers. We've enjoyed bringing you baseball. Home Sports Entertainment thanks you all for watching. Bob Steinfeld, the director and senior producer of today's game, Texas Ranger Baseball, produced this season by David Handler and Jim Feldman. Our associate producers, Kurt Dyker, Greg Mayero, Lee Friday in today. Also remote facilities provided by John Crow Productions. Our technical director, Gordon Powell, and the engineer in charge, Don McCabin. season when you speak we speak to you from the ballpark in Arlington this is Greg Lucas for Norm Hitzkiss our final score in the final game at Arlington Stadium 4-1 this is HSE